Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Savage Saturdays here on the Drinking Bros Podcast. I'm your host, Derek White. Joining me, as always, it's Owen. It's Owen. We just wanted to take a second and let you know that today's episode of Savage Saturday is sponsored by GhostBed. GhostBed's been a loyal sponsor of the Drinking Bros Podcast for over four years. Everybody loves GhostBed. I love GhostBed. I'm the proud owner of two ghost bed mattresses and two pillows and right now if you buy a mattress from ghost bed you get two free pillows and if you go to ghostbed.com slash drinking bros you can save 25 percent that's ghostbed.com slash drinking bros grab yourself a mattress two free pillows get some good sleep enjoy the show welcome back Welcome back to Savage Saturdays. This is going to be a, a, a an interesting episode. I feel, I already feel like I miss you. Um, Owen had his microphone stolen today. We yeah. got a couple guests. We yeah. got a couple guests. Um, and we have, I haven't seen Owen in three weeks. Three weeks. It's been three weeks. He went on vacation. Went down to Texas. You were gone. I, I, yeah, as soon as you got back, I left. Yep. So it's been about three weeks since we've seen each other. It's weird, and I want to talk... More and catch up, but um, you got no microphone. We don't know how your audio is going to go. It's probably going to be um, shitty. We'll catch up. We'll catch up next week. Next time. I'm just going to ignore you today. Have yeah. fun um, checking our audio. We are joined <laughs> today by a uh, couple of friends. I met uh, I met you guys in 2017. We got Brooklyn and Corey. What was your last name again? Sittner. Sittner. Brooklyn Sittner. Corey Sittner, dad daughter <laughs> duo. So I met you guys. I, re- I remember it vividly. It, w- it must have been 2017 at Rush Club in Arizona. I was there emceeing with Christmas Abbott, and uh, I was just I was just shooting the shit with people. And I look over, and some little girl is up on the rig doing ring muscle ups, <laughs> and I was like, "What the fuck is that?" Sorry, and I was <laughs> like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna try." I'm, I'm going to try to swear less. I'm going to try to, I'm going to do my best, um, but you're comfortable oh, yeah. with swearing and you're comfortable with swearing around. You, do you swear around Brooklyn or? Uh, yeah, try, it's going to have to happen. Try, but you try to minimize <laughs> it as best you can. I'm going to do my best. I, I, I had this idea. She, she grew up in like uh, every gym there was like jujitsu gym, MMA gym. She grew up with all, I played semi-pro rugby, so she was around all the rugby boys, and now she's in a CrossFit gym. So, like, the coolest thing about it is she actually hears it 24-7, but she, I can say she's 13, and she's only, like, probably cussed twice. In front of you. In, well, yeah. No. <laughs> well, no. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, for real, like yeah. she doesn't like she doesn't that's, cuss. That's legit. Like, don't when, start because once when, you start, and you when can't she, stop. And when she yeah. and when she like sings rap songs and stuff, she yeah. edits it herself. Yep. That's like the that's, songs we listen to aren't edited, right? Yeah, <laughs> but that's talent. Um, that's yeah. That's I was I was actually I was gonna give myself um I was gonna write I was gonna give myself five post its. I was going to write fuck on each post. <laughs> and those were my allotted fucks for the show. And yep. I think I've already said it five times, so I'm done. Yeah, done. Henceforth, say, here on here on forward, I'm not going to swear. I'm going to do my best. Watch this. We'll see about, about that. See something amazing. We'll see about yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. We are so. in Vegas. Can we put some bets on that? Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. Over under. Yeah, yeah right. Okay. Um, no, watch me. Watch me go. <laughs> Um, so it was, yeah, so it was 2017. I was at this uh, competition called Rush Club, and that's actually the competition I'm doing August 29th. But now they've changed the name to Competitive Fitness Championship. Um, but so yeah, CFC. But um, so you must have been 10 years old at the time because it was three years ago, mm-hmm. and you're 13 now. Yeah. So at 10 years old, she was just cranking out ring muscle ups were you the demonstrator i was the demo girl for that so she's yeah so like there's all these and this is an elite athlete um competition you know and um a 10 year old was the demo girl and i was like what what is that what is that and then i that's when i met uh you guys and then i haven't seen you in probably like 18 months and I was working out at CrossFit Apollo the other day, minding my own business, doing my workout. Who do I see walking past the windows? 
but Brooklyn and Corey. And I was like, <laughs> get the heck out. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh my gosh. What, the, what, is going, what is going on? Get the heck out. Yeah. I don't think I've ever heard yeah. that word come from yeah. Derek ever. Holy moly. <laughs> well, you look at that. So you guys are in Vegas. <laughs> just on a little vacation? Pretty much. A just vacation. Getting away from Montana. <laughs> yeah. Where about you? Yeah. So you guys are from Montana. Yeah. Where do you live about to Montana? Is it like a rural area? Or? Um. Well, it's like the biggest city in Montana. It's called which, Billings. Which is? Which like, is? What's the biggest city in Montana? 160,000 like people. <laughs> 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 like small city. I'm a big city girl, so I always feel like claustrophobic when I'm at home. Really? Yeah. Okay. So just, just a little getaway. You had to get away, get out of quarantine. Yeah. Just break free. How are you enjoying your trip? Is it a good trip? I love coming here. Really? So much. Just staying downtown and pulling it up and just everything about Las Vegas is like my favorite. <laughs> I can't, you know, I didn't come to Las Vegas until I moved here. I never trusted myself to come to Las Vegas. I had, <laughs> I had opportunities in my twenties. I, I remember specifically there was a, uh, even my family did a family trip, um, to Las Vegas. It must've been like 2009 or 2010. And I was like, I got to sit out. And they're like, why won't you come with us? And I said, and I remember saying, I said, I can't even stay out of jail in St. Paul, Minnesota. Why would I go to Las Vegas? You know, like, and like, and, 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 and the funny part of that story is the day they left, they were, they were scared cause they couldn't find me. I was in jail. Like, Oh my I, gosh. I, I didn't, and I hadn't gotten my phone call yet. So like, and it was my mom's birthday. That's Happy birthday, mom. <laughs> yeah. Happy birthday. Yeah. You're welcome. Happy birthday, mom. So they were flying to Las Vegas while I was in jail on my mom's. That's the, I, that was, I've, I've screwed up a few things, but, um, I've done, a, I've done a couple things right too. So, so, um, uh, before we get too deep into, uh, getting to know you guys a little bit, I got a good slapper. So I, do you guys listen to the podcast at all? You guys listen to a lot of podcasts. You don't have to listen to this one. Something I do regularly. <laughs> Is I, every week I share gym music because uh, music that I like and, and we call it the Savage Slapper. Go music, heavy music, but sometimes we do the sapper and that means like quiet emo music. This one mm. goes both ways really? because there's a, uh, the studio album version and then they did an acoustic version. Anyways, the band is called Imminence. Imminence. And, and for, for a while I thought it was just one dude, but it's not. It's a band. So okay. the, and I just found them randomly. I don't even know how, but this this whole album, the this um, it came out in 2017. The band is Imminence. The album is This Is Goodbye, and the slapper is This Is Goodbye. And this whole album is something you can put on in the gym and makes you go. I was bumping Under Oath the other day when we were working out. Yeah, and I saw you head banging on the bench a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of like that. So this band is cool if you want to put like metal on at your gym, but then you got the weak people that can't tolerate metal, you know? <laughs> and so it's like clean vocals, but with a good electronic metal background music nice. and it, and it, and it pumps you up and makes you go so that, and then there's an acoustic version. So this guy can sing, man. He's got like real singing talent. And I, I like, I like the soft tunes sometimes when I'm doing dishes, I get a little <laughs> emo around here sometimes, you know, I can't always go, can't always go a hundred miles an hour. Nope. Um, uh, so that's, that's the slapper this week. Imminence. This is goodbye off the album. This is goodbye. The whole album. Are they is, American? Where are they from? I know, we've been all I, over the world. Yeah, I don't lately. know. Nope. This is English. We haven't done English in a few weeks. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> nope. This is this is English music. But I'm still I'm really big into this. I I googled Russian rap artist the other morning while I was taking a number two <laughs> at the gym, oh. and I found yeah, it's not yeah, just yeah, <laughs> oh, really? yeah. Um, I've been really big into some Russian rap lately. Okay. Um, we've had some great. Uh, emails coming in from savage me at derek com. oh really of people who are like you got to check out this band i know so I i've keep... got i've got one that i listen to that's awesome that i'm gonna really? show you later on today. all right we're, that'll be our next that'll yep. be our next slapper <laughs> yep. in our uh reunion episode yep. when we can definitely hear you clearly right um so that's 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 uh and I, I've been listening to these guys since the album came out. Imminence. This is goodbye. It's just right, right out of the gate. The whole album is is great for working out. Um, what do you listen to? Rap mostly. Rap. So like when I it, when I work out, I like listening to rap. Like who's your who's your favorite rap artist? Because there's like, like some new like modern right day. now. Yeah. Or like of all time. Well, what are you listening to? What are you are you working out still today? Still, or what are you going to listen to today? Well, like, what whatever. 
I don't know. That's a hard question because like it just depends like what the workout is usually. What your mood is, yeah. Like Thursdays, I'm good with some country. Like if we're rowing. Get out of my house. <laughs> Sorry. That's the one music. Do you like country music? Sorry. Mm, we usually. Like good We country. do listen to it when we're road tripping. Sure. She's into Garth Brooks. So I can I can mess with Garth Brooks. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So I like, I like Johnny Cash. And there's a dude, uh, Coulter. What's his name? Coulter. I, I call him Cotton Ball, and, and I'm, you know, but um, <laughs> Paul Cawthon. Is the cocaine guy? Paul Cawthon is the cocaine guy. Yeah. That's and, a great and, song. and about a year ago, Matt Best asked yep. me not to share Paul Cawthon's name <laughs> because he wanted like exclusive rights to his music. <laughs> but I think there's got to be an expiration date oh, yeah. on that. You know, yeah. let me see this because this guy is actually Coulter. You listened to that Wednesday before you left. Pro the song about cocaine? Because you yeah. told me yeah, I was, you oh, can yeah. only listen to country yeah. if it deals right. with I cocaine. Get, I get, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's one of my favorite Johnny Cash song, Cocaine Blues, man. <laughs> or uh, Delia's Gone, the song about how he had to shoot his wife because she wouldn't yep. be quiet, you know? So like, yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, I do like Coulter Wall. He's a really good country artist, but well, I don't know. I, I, I like, I like old rap. I, I really like like Nas and Biggie and she Tupac. Tupac's favorite my favorite of all time. Of right? all time. So you got to check out. So yeah. I was, I was solid choice. I met yeah. a guy at the gym and he's from Queens, New York. And I told him that I like Nas mm -hmm. and he introduced me to this artist, um, whose name is core mega and it's like the same type of music and mm -hmm. oh my god Good it's stuff. amazing it's amazing right out of the gate actually so it's core mega c-o-r-m-e-g-a and then this song that i really love is called beautiful mind it's legit right out of the gate I can't sing it because I promised I wouldn't swear anymore, but right. it's good. If you, you like could that edit kind of it stuff. like me, nah, I don't know how to do that stuff. <laughs> Definitely what, not yeah. Often. Yeah. My edits are often phallic and with her being her age and like hanging with me so much, she gets all these like perspectives. She gets full perspective of everything. Cause she listens to the, like, whatever you call it, new, the yeah. new rap and everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then she's also like in this stage where like, whether it's music, movies, whatever, it's always like, what'd you grow up listening to? What'd you grow up watching? What'd you, so mm, like, that's cool. Yeah. You guys are like best friends. You, you guys spend a lot of time together at home and, this means yeah. Like, Every I, I've been day. Really, <laughs> I've been, this is, this yeah. Is, this is, yeah. That's that. I. I. You know. Uh, so I've known you guys about three years and known you from a distance the last year and a half or so. I've always admired and respected your relationship and like now I got kids and so it's like and you're raising a killer or a champion. You know. I was I was blown away. So here's so I met you three years ago. You're ten years old doing ring muscle ups and um and just the other day we worked out last week and um. I was like, I was about to start the clock. And so we were all doing the same workout and it started on the assault bike. So I'm sitting on my bike and I'm going to start the clock. And I'm like, why isn't, why isn't she on her bike? She's back against the wall. And I put it together. I was like, oh, in competition, you have to run to your oh, first station. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, good Lord. This 13 year old girl is training how she fights. Yep. Like she already <laughs> understands. And she even practices her victory wave at the nice. end of a workout. <laughs> and I'm just like, well, I'm going to take the lazy route and I'm going to start on my bike. Um, cause, you know, but I was, I was just, I'm, I've been, I've been so impressed over the years. And I remember when I met you guys, one of the, one of the things I said to you is Corey is like one of your, uh, from my perception, like one of your biggest challenges I was like, man, you're going to have to really try hard to keep her humble because she's just very good at a young age and talented with a hard work ethic. And you mm -hmm. have you you have a championship mindset already. When I was your age, I was, I don't know. I was not, I was, I was just a chubby loser. Mm -hmm. Played video games and ate Cheetos and drank Surge, which was awesome. But you know, like, what you know, surge? Yeah, see, yeah, that's Wipes that's the that's the problem with the youth in America today. <laughs> don't they surges. don't know what surge is. I'm just kidding. We are not soda advocates here. <laughs> um, and uh, so I just, you know, I just would um, looking forward to sitting down. I mean, we've been friends for a while, but I don't know much of your guys' backstory, your home life, or your plans for the future and stuff like that. So that's what we're here to talk about. We start from the beginning. I'm gonna talk to Dad for a little bit. So it's good. Are you born and raised in Montana there? Or? Yeah, born and raised 
Billings, and then uh, a short stint in Laramie, Wyoming, when I was going to the University of Wyoming. Did you that's, play sports there? Or? Yeah, I played collegiate rugby there. Is that is it? And then, so that's your you got the cauliflower year going on there. That's rugby. That's from MMA. MMA. Okay. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was like, it's like wrestling. Like, there's there's just there's just signs when you're at a bar. You're just like looking. Okay, who? Will I fight and who will I run from yep. here? If you see cauliflower right. ear, I'm like, well, <laughs> yeah, put some gas in the wheelchair, baby. We gotta, <laughs> oh <my laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna need to make a quick exit, possibly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's cool. So you kind of been into into um, training and sports most of your life. It, you uh, your actually, the. the <laughs> well, you wouldn't know this about me, but. The when I actually got into weightlifting was had a little bit of an incident when I was a actually we were seniors in high school and actually most people don't know this about me just because they see what sure they yeah see of mm-hmm. us right yeah and uh, so I got into weightlifting actually when I was on house arrest oh yeah yeah. yeah. And then uh, I opted for community service over house arrest I in my up, time. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I didn't have an right. option. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It was yep. a little bigger. Deal. Sure. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. then I went to prison. Okay. So then I really got into weightlifting. Yeah. I actually worked in the gym up there, but like that's when I got serious into weightlifting. And then uh, I gained like 60 pounds of muscle, 70 pounds of muscle or something. And then, uh, I've no like when I came home and everything. Fitness has actually kept me out of trouble. Good, yeah. Like it made it made it gave me like a purpose in life. There's other things like it. Actually, being so young and going there was the best thing that ever happened to me because I was a fuck up. And it I was made just you fucking up. Probably made I you t- realize you didn't want to be there. Exactly. Yeah. And <laughs> I tell people this. I go, prison didn't rehabilitate me. It showed me what I didn't want out of life. Yeah. Like, I still to this day remember, like, looking over the tier, and I was just like, like, I'm not judging anyone, but I'm like, dude, these guys, 40, 50, 60 years old, yeah. and they've been in and out of here their whole life, and, yeah. like, put their families through that. And I was like, dude, yeah. life's, there's more to life than that. Mm-hmm. And what's, I think... People don't know that about me, so sure. sometimes they're like, why are these two so passionate about life and everything? And yeah. I tell people because, like, I spent my whole first part of my life, like, hating people and yeah. being a badass or whatever, right. trying to be a yeah. badass and hating people, like, for no reason. Like, yeah. people I didn't even know or whatever. Right. Like, so now, yeah. um, super extreme, like, the other way, like, I love everybody. Yeah. Like, doesn't really because you learned that you, I don't even use the word hate like I don't right. even let Brooklyn use it I'm like well I hate Owen but yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> I just I'm just kidding you but, know what I you you making me so I I I, I haven't been to prison um uh, I avoided that I um but I've done in like 2009 2010 I wasn't doing well that's when they medically retired me I just mm-hmm. I was just doing very poorly and I you know in in a year time probably like a handful three to five day stints at the county jail and you're still sitting in there in the holding tank and you got cellmates and things like that. And I was like, Derek, you got to get your shit together man. Jail because stops. this is, this is absolutely where I don't want to be. And it's the same thing with psych yeah. wards and treatment programs. When I would go to the psych ward, I'd just be like, man, you got to get it together out there because you can't, I don't want to be here. I don't want to. And there's, and you, you see the regulars, you know, and mm-hmm. the people that like, there's people that go to jail and prison. They just know the system and they almost like, it's not that they look, it just doesn't bother them. Comfortable. It doesn't bother them. They're like, oh, just got to do another quick uh, 18 months. It's like, no, I want to go home. Yeah, like, you right. got, like I want to fall asleep to friends, yep. <laughs> you know? So, yeah, that's. I tell people all the time, I'm like, dude, I don't get it. Like, yeah. I like eating when I want and I like females. Yeah. Yep. Well, that's so, so. Like, that's. A f- <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with, I got one cuss word. I'm, I'm going to say, so that here's, here was my life, like my guiding life principle for a while. I was like. Cause I kept fighting after I kept, I kept getting locked up for fighting and that's what I was facing like a felony assault charge. Um, mm-hmm. uh, uh, 
And that was one of the things I came up with. It was like, the only thing I enjoy more than beating the shit out of somebody is sleeping in my own bed. <laughs> and so like at all costs, I will avoid confrontation and, and just go home, you know? So, and that's cause like, yeah, that tough guy mentality and things like and that. And that's but, what happened to me too. Yeah. I was just like, you know, what's cool comfort pillows, <laughs> my house, the house I pay rent at. That's cool. Yeah. You know, being nice to people, being happy is cool. You know, even yeah. when I got out and was on parole, probation, whatever, like, and all that, like I was always like drinking this and that, yeah. like, mm -hmm. It's not even worth it. It's not even worth taking the risk of doing it in case something was happening. I was like, yeah, alcohol. No, nah, dude. Yeah. I'm, I got so, better shit to do. Yeah. Than <laughs> so you don't drink at all? Mm -mm. Yeah, neither do I. I do. Yeah. I'm like, I'm very, yeah. very, very, very control. Yeah. I, we I, all knew I, that. I, I, but, you know, I, I don't drink as much as people think I do. No, and right. I'm very in control. Because, yep. like, drinking, totally. drinking in me is very dangerous. Both, like, from, like, not not so much violence is like I get really like sad and suicidal yeah. and depressed when I if I if I there's a tipping point in how drunk I get and so I only drink um, that's why I only drink beer and I don't even drink red wine much anymore so it's like I, I don't drink hard alcohol or you know like so I drink and I enjoy I enjoy drinking beers the occasional claw every now and, now. Uh, and that's uh, why but, I don't but that's why I don't drink yeah because like just. I like to drink liquor and yeah. I like to get wild mm -hmm. and I like to get crazy yeah. and I know that about myself. So yeah. I'm like, nah, I'll just not put myself in that situation. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a lot. <laughs> I, 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 um, it's easier for me to like really let loose when I'm hanging out with Stacy. Like if her yeah. and I go out, but like I'm, even, even as far as I've come, I'm a danger to myself. If I'm out in a city alone on vacation, it's like, Derek, you need to, you know, <laughs> look at pictures of your boys, man. <laughs> like, yeah. So, um, so well, do, same, same with me, like, now, yeah. like I have so much. Like, yeah. Right. She's always watching. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Plus also like yeah. what she wants to do in life. I ain't got time to get yeah locked up. Sure. <laughs> <Locked> yeah. 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 So that ain't so did you go to college it. after you were released then? Is that yeah, what? Some yeah. Some people call it my second college. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're always like, remember that? Remember the second time you went to college? Dave Mill always says that to me, B. He's always like. <laughs> and he calls me Herman because I'm because <laughs> okay yeah this guy <laughs> Dave Mill cracks me up this guy I worked with my family owns a trucking company I worked with him the whole time I was on house arrest and stuff mm -hmm. before I went and then I went and then <laughs> pumped iron yeah fucking gained like 70 pounds you know came back yeah. my grandpa didn't even recognize me really <laughs> yeah he was standing right next to me That's I was funny. like grandpa it's me are you you all, all natural in prison there? They yeah. got but they got steroids floating around prison and stuff, don't they? Like uh, not really. Not really. Cigarettes. Not really. I always just wondered how Cali Muscle did it. All I did is <laughs> just eat. I ate everything. <laughs> ramen diet. Yeah. Like off commissary, we ate. Cali ramen. Muscle legit did a YouTube video of how to like make a power calorie packed meal in prison, and he's like putting all the con. He he oh, takes like yeah stuff. takes yeah, takes yeah, like yeah. five packets of uh, ramen, puts it in like a Tupperware size yeah. dish, and then he's putting like mustard in there and and all the salt he could find and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. and then uh, so ramen, <laughs> yeah. high dose of ramens and just lift heavy, and then I had uh, so I worked in the gym so. I made this deal with this dude that worked in the cafeteria. He worked on the cafeteria line, right? So he would slide me extra food all the time, and I would save his weights for him when he would come to yard. Nice. So, like cool. pizza day. It's weird I'd, how that stuff works. I'd just works, be like, yeah. shink. I'd get back to the table and unwrap it. It'd be like 10 slices of pizza. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah. What up? It's just, I'm not rich, but I'm prison rich. Yeah. <laughs> Ramen and Doritos. Yeah. Ramen and Doritos. Yeah. I ate a lot of Doritos, but like, and it was just like elementary so it was like elementary school, like pizza day. You were like pizza day. Yeah. <laughs> and it's the same like little like rectangle or whatever. Yeah. Pizza. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But 10 That's slices. Funny. I made, I had a deal gone. So I made a couple deals with the, they're called trustees in the county jail there. So yeah. it's like people who are they doing get, long term and they, they're the ones who come around and bring your trays and stuff like that. And I can't remember, gosh, what did I, I, I think I, it must've been like canteen money or food. Maybe I let them keep my cake. And he gave me a, a a small golf pencil and a piece of paper, but then I also traded for a book. So I got a book, which you're not allowed books in the county jail there. You know, it's just it's just like laying yeah. in a cot. But it was a book called The Cowboy, 
And it was like, it was a straight up middle-aged female romance novel. <laughs> <laughs> so I was reading about Blake and his, but I was like, it was taking my mind off the, uh, uh, yeah, being, yeah, yeah. being in jail there. Yeah. So, um, all right. So, um, you, you go to, you go to college, you play sports and, uh, how old are you now? Really? Oh, you don't want to uh, say <laughs> It's so crazy because it goes into like everything that like I teach her and stuff about mm -hmm. mindset and yeah. everything because like the mind's your most powerful muscle. Sure, like that's yeah. the biggest thing for us. And that's a big part why I think she does so well. Cause I've taught her that ever since. So like for real, I always like forget. I'm always like, wait a second. I never think about it because age is just a number. Yeah. Like I never think about it. I only ask to someone, try to put the time. Yeah. Until someone like, yeah. Until someone asks me. So I tell people you're only as old as you feel. So I'm like 20 something, but yeah. I guess chronologically they say I'm 41. Okay. But also it's cause I work out with like yeah. 20 year olds and stuff. She's all just, the time, yeah. So and you're like, still at the I age. Keep where them we're, young. Like, <laughs> we're like, woohoo burpees. Like kids yeah. can just do burpees. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, they don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I for like real, burpees. Too, like when people go like, like people at my gym, they'll be like, oh, I'm old. I'm like, you feel old because you say you're old every day. Yeah. You know, I, I, so it's like, I we, um, like my mom is 56, but she's, um, she's just, sometimes I post things on the internet, like workouts and stuff for younger people. Right. And then two days later I find out my mom's cranking out these workouts. I'm like, what? So like I posted a while back that I did, a, I do a hundred sit-ups for time twice a week. Um, and then my mom was like, yeah, I've been doing a hundred sit-ups for time. And I just, my mom hasn't been, she's been doing CrossFit for three years. Mm hmm but before that, her whole life was like Denise Austin VHS tapes at the house and a yo-yo diet, you know? So she's been good and consistent. So I just don't associate that with my mom yet, but I'm starting to more. Like she has a really solid work ethic. But so my my mom's doing, she's doing the same core exercise as I do, but I had like a, a woman reach out to me and ask me a question because like in one of our workout programs are sit-ups. And she said, what should I do instead of sit-ups? can't but she said she's like what if i can't do sit-ups because i'm over 50 i was like what like that's not mm. that's not like enough of that's not a thing is there like a th actual thing where there's a good reason you can't do sit-ups because like the age thing isn't the thing you know yeah. it's, like, it's not yeah it's <laughs> yeah. so cool as, my, as busy about her grandma my yeah. grandpa and grandma just started doing crossfit really? and it's so cool like grandma my grandma Jeanette did murph this year really yep and she ran Wow. And she did it, she did a partition, but she ran both of the miles and I was just like so excited. I was like, wow, grandma, like I can't like I couldn't believe that she was like doing it. She's sixty nine. Yeah, that's what's up. See, you know, yeah. and, and people awesome. you know, it it, it I have doing Murph. Yeah. I and have, my grandpa that's rode. More than sit. I have I have Yeah, <laughs> yeah so, right. It's yeah. so cool. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and, and I have friends who were I respect their fitness level and things like that and and they're older than me and but they they've retired and kind of taken a step back and they ask me like what i'm gonna do next and it's like well they're like there's an expiration date on what you do and i was like well why i don't i don't know it's like me your body I mean, sure like i have more pain now than i did when i was 22 but i it doesn't no you don't you, you don't have to just stop i mean and i don't know how to I don't even know how to not want to be the best at what I'm doing or be my best at what I'm doing. Maybe my sports will change over the years and be like less impact or something like that. But yeah, that's what's up. I want to be your yeah. grandma when I grow up. Well, yeah. You know, and like, that's, you know. <laughs> but just like you said, is the yeah. biggest thing for me too. Sometimes when I'm talking like it sucks sometimes because I want to help everyone, but sometimes I cannot just, I can't process. I always tell B, I'm like, I just can't process not, yeah. Wanting to fucking do it. Like just, yeah. no, so I, don't, I don't know don't how to like it. Yeah. correlate. Like, oh, it's weird that we say it all the time here. It's like, or for in, in the, for what, like on this podcast and I, and then like, I try to help people on the internet. And so I have to figure out what's different, what makes me different from them. And it's, and it's kind of a, the, a weird, and, and a lot of people have a bunch of different reasons. I think inherent, I think wanting to be the best is an inherent desire and it just maybe gets mm, crushed over years and years of um, just maybe sort of giving up on yourself. Yeah. Cause it's like, does not compute, does not compute. I don't, I don't understand that. I, I operate operator error. Yeah. Right. You know, it's just, yeah. So 
Um, yeah, that's, that's cool. It makes sense. So like I wanted to know, like, I appreciate you sharing that. And now I kind of understand, I see the way you guys work together. And it's really cool. And you are, so well, how long, so you're 13 now. Mm-hmm. How long have you been doing CrossFit or, or weightlifting? When did you when did you start weightlifting? We've been doing I've been doing CrossFit for six years now. Really? And did you kind of push her towards that, or was that a natural thing you chose? Or I um, didn't push her actually. No. Yeah. Like so, he started CrossFit, and I get like from the second I walked into the gym, I was like, "Wow, this is like so cool!" Like I fell in love with the sport like almost automatically, and a friend just told. He always wanted to try it, but a friend just brought him into the gym. And then I like, I, everywhere he goes, I go with him. Yeah. So I've been exposed to a lot of different sports and a lot of different things. And I guess I just walked in and I was like, wow, I feel like I'm supposed to be here. And like when you're seven and you walk into a place and you feel that it's super weird. Cause you don't know what's going on. Like I've never felt so passionate for one thing. Like what, yeah. what, like Regular seven-year-olds don't really sure. No, I'm, I'm trying to think about it. Like, I was like, you know, and that's wow. kind of, I, I fell into fitness at 17 because I was like, I got really sad and I was crying and I told my mom I wanted to kill myself and they took me to a psychologist and he told me to start exercising. But before that, like I totally lacked that growing up. When I was seven, I was, I was, um, I was, I had a paper route so I could afford um, video games and uh, snacks you know, video games and I just sat around eating chips, uh, drinking pop and playing video games. And then after the paper route, I was a caddy and that's how I made money. But I just did not have a, I played seasonal sports and stuff, but I did not have that kind of clarity. And that's what's always been crazy to yeah, me about wild. it. Like people don't, <laughs> yeah, that's, like people that see her on the crazy. internet and stuff, you know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? They don't know that. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? That's rare. But that's, but it's cool. But it, like you, you meet you, like the moment I saw you for the first time, I was like, oh, well, that's rare. I have to I have to find out who this person is because you don't meet many people like <laughs> you. I haven't met somebody like you since I met you. So, you know, like that's rare. That's cool. Seven years old. Well, yeah. And like I try and tell people like when they're like, you know, like if she's done a documentary or something before, like they always ask like what was the only thing that like we've came together and tried to pinpoint is like when I started CrossFit for some reason she had this weird obsession with the rings. Like I never told her she just used to go to the rings like yeah. every day. Yeah. And she would go to the rings and go to the rings and go to the rings every single day for like, I'm talking two months. And she was just like, she was just like a kid, you know? So Swinging she didn't really know what she was doing. Like she was that, like yeah. trying to pull herself up, doing all this different stuff. And but she had this obsession with like getting a ring muscle up and, she went over to those rings every single day for like, and actually we were actually here in Vegas <laughs> at CrossFit New U. Uh, and she was seven when she got her first ring muscle up here. So <laughs> I was, I wasn't, I was past 27 when I got my first <laughs> ring muscle up. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> so I try and it, the only thing I can come up with is that like, that triggered something in her brain yeah. like mm-hmm. oh so if i want this and i work hard for it yeah. i can get it yeah, because effect. yeah so because once that happened mm-hmm. like then everything else was like yeah. just, it was like floodgates but like, then you but then you had the presence of mind and you cared enough to really foster that because that's i mean kids mm-hmm. show kids show those kinds of signs but it doesn't maybe the parent doesn't have the focus or the free time or just you know when you make your you know some people don't make their kids a priority so like you saw that and obviously you nurtured that this whole time and that's what and that's why you see i'll never you know like so you know travis barker the drummer yeah it's like there's a video of him playing the drums at three or four years old or something and his parents was like well you just you know we fostered that we you know we show signs so like when we have the 18 month old boys now and we, I purposely expose them to fitness and music and we'll just kind of let them see stuff for a while. And then if they start showing that kind of interest, it's like, that's, that's mm-hmm. our life priority here. Me and Stacy is like, we're just waiting for those boys to show those signs and be like, all right, here's an adult that can help you yeah. and teach you things. And, well, and yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Here, it, it yeah. takes an adult, you know? And so, mm-hmm. so seven years old and it just kind of took off from there yeah yeah just, when i think about it it's so crazy because i'm like how was i able to know like that's yeah. what i wanted to do at right. such a young age yeah. but 
it's the best decision I've ever made in my entire life. Cool. So, so now have, have you, you've done so well, even on top of that though, when I think that, and then when I really noticed, I was like, Holy shit. Did this just happen at like eight years old? Yeah. So after that, before we met you, we were at rush club even before that. Okay. Yeah. It was actually probably two years before that. I mean, she was, if you look at pictures now, tiny Christmas Abbott was there actually. Okay. It was a Christmas Abbott, right? Yeah. She was a demo girl. Okay. It was the first time ever. And yeah, eight years old. And she did bar muscle ups and all this. And the crowd went crazy. And you all. were demoing at eight years old? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Handstand push. Yeah. Hand, handstand push ups. Straight. Straight handstand push ups. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you don't got much body weight. Let's not yeah. get boasty here. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. That's, okay. that's her favorite it's comment. Yeah. Everyone, it's okay. everyone always says that on the internet. And I always say, I may be well, they lighter. Say it to me too. They're like, well, oh, yeah, pull ups are easier for him because he's missing a leg. I'm like, <laughs> you know, I have I'm just kidding. I always momentum. tell people, you still have to be as strong as your body is. Yeah. For real. Mm-hmm. Yep. yep. Nope. Very true. <laughs> yeah. Very true. So yeah. there's um, there a 25 year old named Kobe that I train with. And he always gives me crap about how I'm lighter. Yet I beat him by like five minutes, and I'm like, I'll put a weight vest on. Let's yeah. go again. No, I, I mean you're gonna, you got You have to, you have to talk shit to your friends, and you have to let them talk shit to you. So like, I, I'm five six, and before I got shot, I was big into running. You know, and people who are short love to say that they're not built for running. I was like, man, I had a ten fourteen two mile. I had a four forty five one mile. I was like, we're built for running, you know, but like people, yeah, it's just, you're just going to deal with that forever and laugh at people, including myself when I say dumb shit. Well, so what's crazy about that is at this time <laughs> she was going to the CrossFit gym with me, you know, like she wasn't, do you own a gym in Montana there? Now it, I do. You do? Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Yellowstone okay. CrossFit. Nice. Yellowstone CrossFit and, in Billings, Montana. And she'll want yep. you to know what. I got 2% of the gym, so I'm a gym owner as oh, well. Right on. Nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, equity. Yep. Yeah. Equity. equity. I got, yeah, that's cool. Uh, that's legit. So like back then. Did you get a monthly paycheck from that then? I mean, you're 2%. Um, where's it, where's it he called? pays me in clothes. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and food because yeah. I wouldn't want to feed myself. Sure. Yeah. Uh, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, so at that time she was like, You know, she loved coming to the gym with me and stuff. Mm -hmm. She wasn't laser focused like now. It was like she was just, she was like, oh, this stuff is cool here. I like to do all this stuff. And she was like just naturally kind of good at a lot of the Mm -hmm. stuff. Sure. And then even me back then, I was like, like, is she, like, I don't know. When I started really noticing is when we go to different gyms in like Arizona and stuff and mm-hmm. she was only like eight or whatever. And the yeah. tr- then the trainers down there who see way more athletes than we do and see in Montana. Right. Yeah. And they were like, damn, what? And she'd always like play all these games with the trainer. Like, let's see if you can do this. Let's yeah. see if you can do that. Yeah. Let's see if you can Got do this. Really talented. I call it but gym horse. Yeah. At that same time, she was doing gymnastics back home you know and yeah. she loved gymnastics that's what we're that's yeah. what so like we get, we're doing two things with the boys gymnastics and piano lessons it's like give them that found what a cool like it's a good foundation yep. for kids you and know, uh, just teach them all she about advanced their really quick in gymnastics like i mean within six months she was like on the level four competition competition, competition team yeah level four comp team she was the youngest on the team and stuff and she loved it like and um it was like it wasn't the time like it was three and a three hours, three and a half, three forty five, three something like three and a half hours three or four times a week or something. Yeah. Oh wow, yeah. Um because it was a comp team, you know, and everything. Yeah. Wow. And then we came to Rush Club and she did this demo thing, right? And she yeah. was like on top of the bar and the crowd was going crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and we were so staying. Cool. My parents live half the year in Arizona, but it was summertime, so they weren't there, but so we were just staying at their house. Sure. And I'll, I remember it clear as day. Like, we were just sitting on the couch just watching TV. It was, like, the next day. It was, like, a Sunday. We were just chilling out. And she turned to me, and she was like, can I tell you something, Dad? And I was like, well, yeah, I'm your dad. You can tell me whatever you need, you know? And she's like, I don't want to do competitive gymnastics anymore. And I was like, what? I was like, for real? Like, it was just weird to me because yeah. I was like, Mm-hmm. I this. yeah i was like why not she's like it's just so crazy to me <laughs> she's like i just don't get the same feeling as when i'm on that competition floor on the crossfit floor and she's like 
and when I'm at gymnastics sometimes, Dad, I'm thinking about what I could be doing at CrossFit. Like, what am I not gaining? Sure. And like me, I'm like, I'm trying to process yeah. all this because she's eight years old. Yeah. And, I'm and like, you're like, you're like, wait, this is what I'm thinking about myself and my life right now. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm like, yeah. why do you have grown up problems? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's just the craziest thing to me because I was like, how at that age can you process all yeah. of that and like put it into like even terms and weird words and have that feeling like that yeah. feeling and once or she, such a smart decision. And once she said that, I was like, I was like, I just said, you, you got to do what you love. Like yeah. if you can process that and know that feeling at this age, like I'm like, dude. Yeah. And that's man. It, like what's cool is, and you know, don't do you uh, remember that. Yeah. That's how champions start young, man. It takes, and it takes a good parent to, you know, like no, nobody's self-made. There's, there's typically always a parent or, or yeah. some influence involved. Yeah. And that's, you know, I hope my kid, like we, we, you really, you always really hope that your kid is kind of like one of the, but it's rare. You're rare. You know, my kids, they like, I'm, I'm, I'm proud right now. Cause my kids um tell me when they poop their diapers, you know, that's, that's step yeah. one. Step one. You just walk in the room like, Hey, who pooped? And one of them's like, poop, who was like, all right, that one, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, um, is you've been lifting weights since like nine, 10 years old or something like that. Huh? And you yeah. know, you know, what's weird is when I was growing up, my parents were like, they were of the mind of like lifting weights, taking supplements and things like that. They're like, that's bad for you at this age. It'll stunt your growth. But they didn't have a problem with me eating Oreos and Ho-Hos and drinking pop. Right. You know, so oh, like yeah. we're doing it's the very opposite like, yeah. with our boys is fostering that health. And, and um, so you have no, or do, you, do you take supplements and stuff like that yep. too? Just, yeah, because it's just protein and. Yeah, that's just, what I tell people like. She doesn't take like a bunch of like all this nothing crazy psycho right. pre workouts and stuff. Yeah. But I'm like protein and stuff. It's yeah, it's a s food like yeah. you're not electrolytes. So it's not like you're not taking. Yeah, anything people that give their kids McDonald's and Dairy Queens, but scrutinize me over whether or not they should give their kids Formula One. And like yeah, you guys like, are first form people too. Yeah, yeah, talk about for it's pro it's weight, like, it's protein. It's like they'll give them McDonald's, and McDonald's Dairy yeah. Queen, no questions, no questions. I know that, but scrutinize me. Yeah. over good healthy whey protein and that's uh, so that's funny you talk about that because i've also always told her since a little age i'm like you know what be someone's always gonna have something to say yeah regardless yeah mm -hmm. you sit on the couch they'll tell you you're not active enough you do all the stuff you're doing now they say oh it's your dad pushing you oh it's this yeah. you're too young just do what the fuck you love yeah like that and that's the thing too like i've always talked to her straight up like i've never talked to her like really like she'll tell you i don't sugarcoat much yeah but i also think it's like what's made her how she because i'm just like yeah people are gonna fucking talk shit yeah yeah like do what you love regardless mm -hmm. like or what do what you don't love but to please somebody else that yeah no because was, they're gonna like, talk well, shit anyways yeah, yeah. No, so, I, when we were yeah. Not, it doesn't matter <laughs> what you do you're always gonna have people that are trying to pull you down because true successful people want other people to be successful people might talk to you like oh way to go and good job and whatever but as soon as you turn around they're gonna say something to a friend that oh she did this or whatever and no matter what i do i'm gonna have people like that but i'm also gonna have with what i'm doing i'm also gonna have people that are gonna be sticking by my side no matter what and i think it's what I'm doing right now is a good way to find who are my real friends and who's going to be there when times are tough or I'm not doing well in competition or whatever. Like the real people come out at some point and I think that it's really good to find who you have That's by your true. side. And that, it, that goes both ways. Like, so like I, what you said is 100% true. And like to being totally honest, sometimes I catch myself hating on someone for not a good reason it's just like a human thing and it's like you you think you dislike someone but you're just you're like jealous or envious or something like that and you you have to be able to catch yourself and like you're just like so like I'll, um what's his name david goggins oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah david goggins david yeah mm -hmm. so like i just i have you know i was a really late jocko adopter i just have this like you know like i don't pay too much attention to high profile military social media type people. I don't, I don't know. Like, I stick to myself, you know, and you, I just, I think I don't trust people is one of my things. Cause there's so many, 
fake people out there and things like that. So until I sit down and meet someone, I just don't, I don't automatically trust people. And I think sometimes I catch myself being a bit of a hater. And then David, so like that David Goggins, he, I remember, and I'll just, I'll just be honest. And I was wrong about this. Um, he does like ultra marathons yeah, or something yeah. like that. So he did a run and then he went to the hospital and then he, as soon as he got out, he went and finished that run. And I was sitting here thinking, and I, and I was sitting here and I was just like, what an idiot. Like, what a dumb thing to do. You know, like what, th this guy's an idiot. And then, um, I just, I was just, a, I just didn't like him for no good reason. I didn't, I never met the guy, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, but it was kind of like that, like the go hard. And I was, cause I'm like, well, why don't you be smart and just kind of like dial it back sometimes. And so he posted a video of he, he had some knee problems and he was getting fluid sucked out of his knee and a lot of people were shitting on him and they're like, you need to slow it down. You need to, you need to be smarter. Ha ha. Look at you. I knew this was going to happen. So a few days later he posted a video and he was running and excuse my language here, but he was like addressing me. So he's running out there and he was like, all y'all motherfuckers want to hate on me, try to tell me how to live my life. And he looked right at the camera. He's like, you don't fucking know me, bitch. And I was like, <laughs> you're right, dude. I don't know you. And I respect, I respect that. Like you're like, I, you kind of catch yourself. It's a human, it's a human thing. So like people do it to you and you have to be careful not to do it to other people. Cause it's mm -hmm. just a, it's just a natural mm -hmm. human thing that you have to be aware of. And like, that's true. It's, it's actually really hard or it's, it's, it, it takes work for you to want other people to succeed, you know, it, it takes work and effort because it's mm -hmm. not the human, it's not the human go-to man. <laughs> like people are like, we're all jealous and envious and stuff like that. So for the record, I'm like, I'm a big David Goggins fan now. And I was, and I was wrong before I was, <laughs> I was a turd. I saw it. <laughs> this is my official public apology, but I, I love that mentality where he was just like, you don't fucking know me. Don't, you're like, don't tell me how to live my life. You don't know me. You don't know nothing. And maybe may, he's like, maybe, maybe what I'm doing is stupid, but I've made the conscious decision to not care and do what I want to do. And if you don't like that, well, why are you following me? Yeah. You know, it's like, it's just like, does it even matter to you? Yeah. No. Yeah. And that's what's, <laughs> no, that's what's crazy. That's what I was going to say about that, especially like with her, with social media and like her social media being yeah, big, I bet you guys get some pretty big for her age and people stuff. telling What's, you how to raise your daughter yeah, and stuff like that's that. That's you know? crazy about it. Yeah. The thing with social media, I love it. Like it's gave her all yeah. kinds of opportunities and mm -hmm. even me, like just being with her, you know what yeah. I mean? But so I'm thankful for it. But it's just always crazy to me how like ev it makes everyone think that they have to say something. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or, they have, or they have an opinion that needs to be heard. Right. Yeah. Like no matter like I always say like Really, dude? Yeah. She shouldn't. Oh, oh, sorry, Jack five six seventeen. Uh, <laughs> you mean she shouldn't be lifting? Yeah. Okay, let's fucking scrap every dream that she has right now. Yeah. No. Because. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Like that's the way I look. I'm always like. Yeah. We call them keyboard critics. Yeah. So. Because I'm always like. Guess what, bro? Yeah. The thing is, and. To go back and actually touch on the humble part that you told me like years ago, like mm -hmm. the hardest thing, what I think actually, and my, I was talking with my friend Lacey that we were staying with and mm -hmm. she actually said, she's like, I think that that's what actually helps keep you guys humble is take fucking Instagram away. Take whatever. It doesn't matter. Yeah. We're just doing what the yeah. fuck we were going to do yeah. anyways. Yeah. We would be doing and that was, and that regardless. was regardless. That was something I said. I didn't know you guys. I was just you know like, wow. Mean? So like, it's yeah, that's what this weird, like I, I'm, I was trying to talk to her too. Like that's why I'm in this weird stage. Like yeah. even that, like out there when I was telling you about kill cliff, like supporting her and stuff, yeah. like I'm always like on one hand, I'm like, yeah, she works hard. She da -da -da. And then on the other hand, like even here, like, bro, like she was sitting out there saying like, I'm at Derek's house. I'm at Der like, yeah, so crazy. Cool. Opportunity. People like yeah. you that are influencers to us and her that she looks up to. Like, it's so crazy because you're telling us this about us now, but like, well, I look up to you guys. Like, as a dad, like you want, you but, make me, I'm taking notes on how to be a dad. And you get a what I'm saying? Yeah. What, so what you don't know is that like, yeah we look up to you. She looks yeah. up to you. And like, so now like I'm always, it's so I'm in this weird place. Like we're working hard and I'm like, okay, we're like, our vision is 
She's going to win the CrossFit game. She's going to yeah. do this. She's going to be around all that. Like, you know what I mean? Mm. But also as it's happening, like, fuck, this is weird. Yeah. This is so, so weird. Crazy. Uh, yeah. Like, like, it's like when I like when we go watch like a competition and I'm like watching like my inspiration and people come up to me like, can I get a photo with you? I'm like, yeah, what? I'll tell you, like, that's that's exactly my so crazy. Too, I get, it's just I get, so crazy. I get though. Goo, 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 goo goo Gaga over a lot of people. And then I don't understand why people like even like me. You know, I have to <laughs> yeah. every day I wake up, I ask my wife, I'm like, hey, you like me still, right? Like, like, <laughs> like no, I just get no. Yeah. yeah so but, it's like our mindset is like. Yeah. fucking best in the world mm -hmm. 100 miles an hour that's where we're going but while it's happening we're still always like damn this shit is crazy like, like yeah yeah that's cool. like even with yeah. with i told you like hinshaw inviting her to yeah that's gnarly yeah people like are, my training partner is like you were just texting chris hinshaw yeah that's a you cool, know what i mean i'm yeah. like but also on the other hand take all of that out of it We'd still just be doing, still be we'd be working yeah. out mm -hmm. but and no, like traveling. You, like you, that's what we've been doing. Yeah. And it's, and it's because of who you are that makes, gives you these opportunities that you do it. Yeah. So that, that's your, um, that's your, have you, have you done CrossFit competitions yet? Cause like, do well, they, they don't have like an age, like, like you do the, I know you do the open and you train for everything, but yeah. you're doing the open this year in the, is this going to be like your first official yeah. entrance? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's 14 to 15, but I'll be 13 doing the open because I'll be 14 by the games. So technically, so technically this is foot in the, the door. The first one. Right, right on. When does that start? Well, October it's supposed to be, but there's some talk about it that them moving it back to February. Yeah, so. I heard Castro. Which, well, also because which the games would be got better bumped. for me. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, it'd make her older. I, I listened to a podcast Dave Castro did that Talking Elite Fitness, mm -hmm. and they want to move it back to February, March um to uh help gym owners sell that january 1st crowd it's like hey you know like sign up yeah. today we'll start training for this and stuff like that and like yeah let's bring yeah. it crossfit has been weird the last couple of years like the, the, it was this like awesome thing that got built up and then they just yeah. they put everything in a cup and rolled the dice and, and then they was, changed it yeah. and i was like mm -hmm. Well, I guess I'll have to re-envision and like. Yeah, there's just, it's so just like, like a different path yeah. there, like the golden. So that's your, yeah. so your goal is to be fittest in the world yeah. by 2026 or so. Cause we're like, when are you going to be 18? So the, <laughs> no one knows this, but yeah. the goal is to win the teens division. And then I want to try to make it as an individual at 16. Oh, Lordy. I mean, that's, yeah. But why not? Yeah. But. So I did, I told Haley Adams. So Haley Adams made it at 18 as an individual. And I was like, because of you, I realized that that was possible. And now I'm going to try to make it when I'm 16. Because the 16-year-olds the sixteen year olds do the same weight as the adults. Yeah. So I can make it as a 16-year-old going against all, all my inspirations. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, you kind of like live, live breathe that goal is like you're, you're training yeah. and eating and rest and stuff like that now you, you're doing that rp is it what's it called rps rp strength rp strength well rp training rp strength yeah um their nutrition program yep i have a one-on-one -on -one coach really shout so out to colin what's up colin <laughs> what from, up colin from, from let's RP, go it's wow look it's rp, RP yeah rp strength rp strength. Yeah. RP strength yeah that's right so this is there's like this is and i don't I um I have some friends who are sponsor or like they just um advertise for them on the internet and it's one of very few nutrition um advice givers that I've always I've always looked at their shit and I'm like that's legit that's yeah. and that's kind of like it's kind of like what I do and what I believe in stuff like that and they work with people one on one and stuff like yeah. that so so you got you just got like the coaches and that's so cool about um you know when you um I've I've read books about you know, we um, see these champions and things like that, but don't know the backstory. And it's kind of like with you, like the, 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 the harder you start working when you're younger, you start getting that attention of like the Hinshaws and coaches. So it's like the better you do, the harder you work, the more opportunities are available to you. Yeah. And it's just as like, this is, we're watching in real time, the making of a future champion. Like I believe that wholeheartedly, you know, Be and I was even, I was, I would tell I was uncomfortable in the gym the other day I was and I had to like just shut up 
sit back and watch and take notes. Cause like we did that workout mm-hmm. and it was like the assault bike, burpee box jump overs and the muscle ups and stuff. And I don't think you were doing as well as you wanted to on the muscle ups. Mm-hmm. And you were like, <laughs> just get up there. It was, and I was just like, Oh man, this is like, he's like very stern, you know, we have high standards and things like that. And I was just, I was just, you, I'm, I'm so used to seeing kids treated with, pats on the back yeah. instead of like hey welcome to life right when you're you're you're, <laughs> yeah. you're yeah you're like you're you're sucking right now what are you gonna do about it exactly what are you gonna do about it you're gonna stand there and suck or and like you're th- only 13 and i did not i did not have that but that's what i'm gonna do so i was i was kind of like wow this is like and we have these talks too all the time to like as a as a dad because i want to reconfirm to her that yeah. I love her and support her. So and yes, that's right? what I was like, Derek, you're only seeing a short part of these Tuesday. But so and maybe this is the hard lesson part. And like, this is bad cop and good cop comes later. Well, on the no, drive but home, you know, no, but <laughs> that's, I feel like that's good cop. Yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. this is what I tell her. Yeah. I love you so much. And I'm going to push you like that because I know what I expect of you and I know what you're capable of and I know, I what, know you what you expect of yourself. And you've told me this is your goal. Yeah. This is what I tell her all the time. Yeah. I, I ask like probably more than she wants me to. I ask her a couple times, at least, probably once a week, a couple times, whatever. Like I'm always like, is this what you love? Is this what you want to do? Like if she's having maybe a day like that or whatever, you know what I mean? Cause I'm reconfirming. And then I tell her, I love you. And I just want you to know that the only reason I push you the way I push you, mm-hmm. if I'm, if you think I'm pushing you in there, not in the sense that, Hey, haters out there, it's not me pushing her. Right. Cause no. I've heard that enough. Like it's her. Right. But what I'm saying is my job is to help. Yeah. Pu- no, that's like cool. if I'm working so out like- with you and telling you pick up the fucking bar, it's to yeah. motivate you. It's, so it's, and it I, just so happens you're a 13 year old girl, but everybody has those moments in a workout and it's nice to have a voice there that says, Hey, mm-hmm. suck it up. Keep going. Is this how you want to act when things go wrong? Is this, so it's just, that's the awesome. only difference is that you happen to be a 13 year old girl and we don't see you with the equal amount of respect as I would a gym buddy. And you know? I, <laughs> like, mm-hmm. that's but, weird. but so like, yeah. you know, if we're talking, I talked talking to her in the car, I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm doing that because of what you're telling me your goals. I tell her this all the time. If you just want to fucking go to the gym and be fit and cool and hang out and like be fit and active. Cool. Let's do it. Go ahead. Take your rest. But you were telling me that you want to be be the champion. No, the best in the world. Yeah. Yeah. No. Greatest of all time. You're telling me you, you're telling me you want to be, yeah, that comes with a lot of fucking hard work. And when you fucking are shaking your head in a workout, yeah. I tell her that it's stuff. Unacceptable. I tell her yeah. that stuff all the time. I'm like, hey, this is like the a talk we have all the time. I go, hey, cool. It sucks. Yeah. We already know the workout's gonna suck. Welcome to CrossFit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Every workout you do is gonna suck, probably. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So no, that's very true. So like no that, matter that, that, no, that is just not probably, yes. So no like, matter <laughs> So yeah. this is what I'm telling you. <laughs> we already know it's gonna suck. Yeah. You if you shake your head or you're going or whatever it's yeah. not helping you yeah it's only it already sucks it makes victim. it more sucky it makes yeah, you, yeah. did I, you hear it like it makes you more of a victim it's actually so actually um i have a good friend and that was his downfall um he was a great athlete um he was a really good athlete but he um when things were going bad for him he he got he beat himself up too much and he just eventually walked away and now he wishes he would come he you know and then he has his moments where he's like, man, what if I just like he because he's still really good, but he doesn't train for um, the games or anything anymore. But if he did, he would definitely make it and probably do well. But he's not in that role anymore. But he would in those when those times when he was beating himself up, he just took it way too far. You know, so like, yeah, you have to you're, you're already learning how to work with that inner voice, that inner monologue. And that's cool. Um, so uh, what, what, what's your favorite CrossFit workout? Oh, that's such a tough question. Cause like your favorite. Yeah, I know. Cause like it change. It doesn't change. I don't know. What what kind Fav- of ch- what, what what do you enjoy? Do you favorite do you like, like sprint workouts? Ask her like what home? her favorite hero is. Who's your favorite hero? JT. Have you ever done it? 
Oh, hero wad. No, what's so? What's JT? So it's twenty one fifteen nine push ups, ring dips, and handstand push ups. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. So it's twenty one fifteen nine mm-hmm. push ups, ring dips, yeah, and regular handstand push ups. It's just blown out shoulders. Does it start it? with yeah. handstands? Oh, it goes handstands, ring dips, push ups. Yeah, uh, well, strict legit. JT is my favorite. She likes to do really? strict JT. Do you, do you, so do you so do, can you do the 21 handstand push-ups unbroken or do you tipping yes yeah okay, not but quite yeah. there strict mm-hmm. yet that's legit that's so yeah if i saw that on paper i'd be like coach why are you trying to flare up my <laughs> tricep tendonitis <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah mm-hmm. i like so like my favorite combos though like regular training like what he programs i love doing gymnastics and then really heavy lifting mm-hmm so like yeah, I've so what, always what are your lifts now? Because you because you, you you do you've done um Oli competitions, mm-hmm. Olympic lifting, which is clean and jerk and snatch. Yep. And you have experience in that. Yep. Competition like that shit, dude. I was a I did a so I did powerlifting mm-hmm. a little bit. And I was a seasoned competitor in different sports. But my first powerlifting meet, I didn't shake my nerves until my second bench press. And I just caught myself like being nervous and rattled and on on you know, I wasn't focused and stuff like that. And I uh, went to my second bench press. I was like, hey, idiot, take a breath. You yeah. know, <laughs> like maybe breathe a little bit, you know, like, yeah. What's uh, what, what's your clean and jerk at these days? Um, what, 125. Good Lord. Yeah. You know, you, you saw the clean and jerk, you know, you pick it. Yeah. What's your snatch at? 100. That's legit. I'm close to 105. Yeah. I get underneath it. I yeah. just need to stand it up. I, that's why I, um... When I was, uh, before I got shot, I was big into lifting and running and stuff like that, but I never did any Olympic lifting. So I don't know what it feels like to catch a snatch in the bottom position or a yeah. clean in the, in the squat position. It just looks so cool to catch like a 225 <laughs> snatch here. I don't, I just muscle. How much do you weigh? How much I weigh? Like on vacation or regularly? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Um, right now I'm like mm, 115 ish. Damn. Yeah. Almost her body weight. Mm-hmm. I think, uh, <laughs> I think you snatch more than Stacy. Stacy's, she's not a full-time trainer or any, she, she trains well and she's got great mobility, dude. I'm so glad our boys have my wife's hips. I'm pretty sure they have my <laughs> wife's hips, but, um, that's, yeah, that's legit. It's legit. It's crazy. So we're, we're, you're, you're just waiting. Ask me about my bench. All right, what's your bench? <laughs> I, I didn't want to ask about your bench because you're like you're like uh, you're you're thin. You get looks like you got long arms. Like, bench is my favorite. Really? Mm-hmm. All right. What is it? One fifteen. Good God. With a pause because it was in a powerlifting. Yeah, you have to do a pause, otherwise, it, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was that? It was that actually? It was at a power meet. Really? Yeah. I That's bench legit. with the girls at my so gym. You bench and you, you bench your body weight. Yeah. No, well, one one fifteen. Okay. I weigh. Yeah. yeah. Body weight. Yeah, wow. That's legit. What's your back squat? 155. Yeah, yeah that's what I hit the, a couple weeks ago. What's your deadlift? 175. It should be more because I hit 175 for five in a competition, and then I haven't been able <laughs> yeah. to pull 185. Well, my one rep max and my five rep max are the same. <laughs> yep. I think that might be off, but uh, yeah. yeah. What's your what's your mile time? How fast are you running a mile these days? I have no clue. You don't know? Uh-uh. You, do you like running or no? I love running so much. Really? You don't you just don't time your miles. She's only saying like that. that because I tell her to stop saying she doesn't like running. Look oh, at, okay. Look at her long so, ass so, legs. Yeah, yeah. So so you love, love so two things I know about you. You uh you love waking up early and you love running. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I always tell my dad if it's opposite stay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's not a morning person. <laughs> I, like, I like staying up late and getting up late. <laughs> yeah, but she did. You just ran a mile though, Murph. Oh yeah, best. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She did Murph vested this year. It's legit. Unpartitioned. I did unpartition my first time this year. That was my biceps were sore because I, I do. I'm pretty good at Murph. I I, I sometimes I crutch the miles. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes I just row two k instead of doing the mile. You know. But uh, this was the first time I went 100 pull-ups into 200 push-ups into 300 squats. And, like, my, my biceps were sore from doing 100 pull-ups in a row. Yeah. And I attacked that motherfucker, you know. I went, like, 20 by 5. Um, cool, man. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, yes and no. I mean, there's – it's – it's yeah, it's a – people do try to do well. But it's, like, with, with uh, Murph is more – Murph is more a community thing about getting out there and 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 doing the workout and and thinking about um 
Memorial Day. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, it is a. It's our tradition. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We've done six years. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I must be on. Six, Every six year six we years. do it together, yeah, no matter two, where we two, are. Two years, I did it twice, and I was a little upset about that because it's like I did it here in my home gym, and then I traveled to go do it with first form and stuff like that, you know. But it's it, it's cool, yeah. So um, um, yeah. Actually, you guys are kind of you guys are first form people. So how long? Yeah, yeah. I just, yeah, I just, just got trying that. to be an athlete. Where are you yeah. at, Jeff? Yeah, what's up, Jeff? <laughs> I know. Yeah. So I was in. I was. I, was, I just got back from St. Louis yesterday. I was um. I, I checked out their new HQ. It's amazing. It's huge. You guys got to get over there and see it. I'm sure. Jeff I'm has, trying. Yeah. That's well, the goal. What do you mean trying? They're not answering. What's up, Jeff? <laughs> Jeff, yeah, where are you Jeff, at? Jeff, where are you? Quit, quit, he's shaving his head. Have you seen him? <laughs> 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 no. I, I, met, uh, I was uh, chatting to this guy and he's like, I heard you met my friends. And I was like, what? He's like, yeah, Brooklyn and Corey. I was like, what do you mean? I met your friends, motherfucker. I've known these guys for like three, four years, something like that. Like, these are my <laughs> friends. And like, you know my friends? Oh, cool. Well, welcome to our club, dog. You know, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I had, um, it, was, it was cool. I got to see, um, you like you like Rob and Dana Lynn Bailey. Like, mm-hmm. oh, I know I got to hang out with Rob for a little bit. Yeah. Was, I've only DLB seen, and Rob are my homies. Really? Yeah, I've only, mm-hmm. I've only like, Rob is one of my guys that I just like, I get a little giddy around. I, I respect the yeah. shit out of him. And I, and, and we run our family businesses here and stuff like that. And I kind of model myself after people like that. So they're so cool. Yeah. yeah. They're so cool. To Brooklyn. Yeah. You really? Yeah. yeah. So, who, mm-hmm. so, so like fire, who are some of your like role models <sighs> people? Cause you, you kind of have that. Yeah. Who, and yeah. Who are they? When it comes to that, it's like really hard. Cause I've met so many different athletes and so many different, people and like fitness and i love them all for different reasons sure so like when it comes to picking one or like a couple i'm like always like i don't want to leave anybody out because they're all so like and they're all so inspiring to me yeah sure um well like my first like big role model role model was miranda olroyd who's that she um was a crossfitter she broke her neck and the only reason like she really didn't get paralyzed is because she did crossfit and oh really I like really looked up to her and I was able to meet her um, more than once. And it was really cool. I guess there's just so many like, and they've all been so cool to me. Um, Katrin's a big role model of mine. Yeah. Um, like, That's a cool thing about yeah. CrossFit and the games is like seeing like the Katrin Davis daughter and like, have you, have you met Tia Claire? I haven't met her. I have met Tia. You've met more. Get, get out of my house. You're there, like, you're better than I me only, at fitness. I only, You've met I, more <laughs> famous. You've met people I want to meet. Yeah, I've well, only met, listen I've, to this. I've only met Tia because Katrin seen me walking by the rogue booth, and she's like, get in here. And then she was like, Tia, meet Brooklyn. And then we came back and, like, talked to her and everything. It was so crazy. That's cool. Um, And yeah, Daniel so cool. Bailey is a big inspiration. Like, she's yeah. so cool. Like Yeah, these are all good all role models. The coolest yeah. part is. Yeah. Get to go with Brooklyn, so then we don't have to stand in line. Yeah, yep. <laughs> for real. We were at the Arnold. This is the coolest thing. It was about Rob. So we were at the Arnold, and you're just sitting there holding your daughter up <laughs> in the back of the line. We 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 were at the Arnold. It was actually the second year. It was the year after the first time we'd ever met uh, DLB. Mm-hmm. But what's crazy is every time we meet these people, like. We met DLB and Katrin. That that was the first time. Yeah. Brooklyn freaks out because they say stuff to her that makes her know that they already yeah. know who she is. People know and who And then she's are. like, oh, no. Yeah. So then it's, and then it's also crazy to me. Like, I'm like, these people are like famous athletes, like yeah. following Brooklyn. Like, that means they're taking the time to like invest in like what she's doing. Like Mm -hmm. it it trips me out. But anyways, this was the next year after we'd met DLB and Rob and stuff and actually got stranded in the airport with DLB and stuff in Denver. Oh, darn. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Darn that. It's shoot. Yeah. Yeah. Cause she, you know, they live in Montana. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the line, dude, the line for them is always like ridiculous. I'm super jealous. It's like, I'm talking like, hours and hours mm-hmm. they start lining up so this line is all the way and i was like i was like b we'll just come back like towards we we're just gonna say what's up just casually them. try to walk by their boot <laughs> yeah, yeah we were just yeah. gonna say what's we up. gotta get seen we were gonna say yeah. what's up to them or yeah. whatever but i was like we'll come back like when they're closing down so like you know what i mean you can yeah say what's up to them and we were wa- we walked through the line we were walking by the booth 
And Rob looked over and seen us. And I was like, what's up? And he's like, he goes, get in here. Yeah. And I was like, oh. and all these, he, all he these people the, are lying or like, yeah. the, what the heck the thing? Like at the movie theater, yeah. the mm-hmm. drop off thing, click, pulls it open. Yeah. Just walk in there right mm-hmm. in the click. And I was like, oh, what's up? Yeah. And all yeah. the people in line are yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> or, or they're really mad because no, they've dude, been waiting when, when in line like and that, someone goes ahead of them. Things like that. When, so like things like that started happening to me when I was maybe like 30 or 31 or something like that. Cause like, even though, so like I, I have that same feeling. When I, cause I just, I look up to everybody too and I don't consider myself a cool person. So when I meet somebody that I really look up to and they're like, oh yeah, man, I love you. I'm like, you know who I am? Yeah. <laughs> What's up? Same. Like what? it's so like, crazy. Uh, you know? And like when they, when, when, when people like bring in and stuff, it's like, it's just a really good feeling. It makes you, it's like, a um, and I'm, I would just, I'm just excited for you to have that at a young age. That's cool. Yeah. It's yeah. so it's crazy to me. Cool. I'm always like. I know how good it makes me feel as a dad and stuff. Yeah. I can't imagine what it makes her feel. Like. Sure. And I mean, yeah. not even like, not even from a, I don't think that part will ever get old to me. Like, because yeah. it's so cool. What actually, and what we like about it is all the people meeting all these people that you would have never known in life. Dude. Yeah. But like, it's hard to not, um, um, have gratitude. Like dude, when, yeah. I, when, I, when I'm struggling, when I'm like, Get like just kind of down in the dumps or I'm in a bad mood or something like that. I, I, that's, I actually go there. I'm like, wait a minute, Derek, your life is awesome. Like I got to meet CT Fletcher and work out with CT Fletcher. I, you know, and like, I get to call like Rob Bailey, uh, a friend, mm-hmm. the cool experiences like that. It's just like, life is too good. Like it's yeah. wild and us. Yeah. What? No. Yeah. What? what? Who? Us? No. Yeah. For real. Yeah. We were, yeah. Is us. Hey, we, like, were at, yeah. we, the, the, <laughs> First day we got here, well, it was the second day we st- we got here late on the fourth night. We crashed, got up the next day, went to the outlet mall because we were by there, you know, mm-hmm. and we're just standing in line and mm-hmm. we're just get- holding our bags and all of a sudden these people come over and they're like, you- Queen Beasy? They're like, <laughs> are you Corey? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, is this Brooklyn? I was like, yeah. 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 And there, she See- was like, oh. Can my son get a picture with you? They've seen yeah. you on the internet and da 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 da. So do ever, cool. Do you ever mess with them? Brooklyn loves it. What? Do you ever mess with them? No. I do. What? <laughs> oh, yeah. So I, just, I, I, I like, I like, um, so uh, one time we were sitting in the airport. It was, um, I think Stacy, I uh, was sitting down. It was Stacy to my right and then an uh, uh, older couple to my left who I didn't know, uh, male, female. And some, I had my hat on. I, th- I think I was probably hung over. I think I was flying home from St. Louis. Beard, sunglasses on. Just, you know, and some dude came walking over. He's like, are you, are you Derek Weida? Are you Derek Weida? Yeah, it's Derek White of it. Like, that's what people, you know, but he's like, he's like, are you Derek Weida? And I was just like, no, you know, and, and his, his face, his cheeks got red and he was like, are you, he's, and, and he was like, oh man, he's, he's like, I was just hoping to get a picture. I was like, not doing pictures. And he was like, man, that sucks. I just, you seemed like a cool person on the internet. And I was just like, eh. You know, <laughs> and then he like turned around and walked away. But then I got up and went and grabbed him, you know, and I was like, I'm just fucking with you, man. That's like, me. If, if, yeah, but it was like, but if, I, if, yeah, if you know, if you, if you know anything about, I do that to people all the yeah. time, I, all the time, yeah. you know, and then after it, but like we made amends and, you know, made them laugh and stuff like that, you know, and, um, then I sat back down and the, the, the couple that was, that I didn't know that were sitting next to me, they're like, you got that guy good. I was like, <laughs> I know. I just like having fun with it yeah, sometimes, yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah. <laughs> but the, yeah. yeah, the thing for her is like, it's probably good because it's happening at her age, you know? So she's still yeah. way in like, I mean, even just being here, dude, you know how many fucking times out there? She was like, I'm at Derek's house. Dad, I'm at I was Derek's like, house. I just gave You're his like, kids a high five. Yeah. I'm at Derek's house. How right? cool I, is I thought that? his house would be bigger. It's not. So, <laughs> I thought he'd have so, his dishes done by the time I got here. Like, let me no, tell you, I just uh-uh. flew home yesterday. Okay. But this like, is yeah. what I always tell her. I'm always like, remember how that makes you feel when Derek takes a picture with you, when Katrin takes a picture with you, when DLB takes a picture with you, all these girls out there looking yeah. up to you. Mm-hmm. Like you remember that shit for the rest of your life, yeah. dude. And it's all, but it's always weird to like think one, that you have that impact on somebody. It just doesn't doesn't compute you know it's yeah, like, yeah touching it's, on yeah. that subject the coolest thing that's ever happened to me because of crossfit 
outside of meeting any athlete. So I met so, so I was competing at the Arnold the first time I ever met Katrin. And I happened to meet this girl that was in line the day before because I was in the training hall because I was about to get ready to lift. And I happened to walk by she and asked I asked for a picture with you. Yeah, she asked for a picture with me and everything. And I we talked a little bit. Just to touch on this, she said it's her favorite moment of all time. Mm-hmm. Mine too, by far. Like, all right. I could almost start crying. Talking We're paying about attention. It. Yeah. So <laughs> I seen the girl online. So I went up to her again just to say hi to her, you know, like make fe- people feel special. Well, and first of all, because I was like, I know you want to meet Katrin. But with everything you do, we'll probably meet her someday. And the, uh, and and I'm not trying to stand like, in line for three hours. It was like yeah. all the way around the road thing. Yeah. Like I was yeah. like, let's go do something else. Mm-hmm. And so I seen the girl and I just went up and said hi to her. And she's like, oh, what's up? And she's like, are you in line to see Katrin? And I was like, no, I'm not going to. I don't really want to wait in line for three hours. I'm sure I'll be able to meet her or train with her someday. And she was like, you know what, Brooklyn? Like, you are so cool. You have to meet her like stand in our place like stand with us and i was like she said you're so inspirational you need yeah. to make catch <laughs> and um i'm trying to be i was i'm just humble you know so i'm not gonna I'm just tell the story uh, no, <laughs> say the truth hey just be, hey, just she's yeah, like just. you're so inspirational that you need to meet katrin and everything and she's like we're almost ready to go in just stand in with us and i was like okay sounds good and my dad was like oh do we have to go like around the corner and we're in she was like no we're next I was and like, it, cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it wasn't better. just that. So this mom and this little girl went in before us. And this little girl was like taking photos with everybody and had everybody sign her shirt. And like not even was, like. And so it was Ben Smith. Ben Smith. Matt Frazier. Matt Frazier. Katrin. Katrin. I think that's all. That was it. Mm-hmm. And not even joking. She turns around and sees me and literally like runs up to me and she's like oh my gosh can I get a photo with you mm-hmm. and I'm like yeah and like she's like will you sign my shirt and everything so it was literally Ben Smith the same shirt. Matt yeah. Frazier Katrin and Queen Beezy in the middle yeah. and she was like you're like my biggest inspiration ever like I love you so so much and like in my head I was like trying to process I was like she was like just with like the fittest people on earth like the best people in the world she associates and, you with them. And yeah. she was just like telling me how much she looks up to me and like I'm her favorite. And I was like, that's just so, it's so crazy to me because I was getting ready to go see my, like my favorites. Mm-hmm. And this girl runs up to me and she's like starstruck from me. Like it's so, it was the best moment of my life probably. Like I visualize it over and over again just because like whenever I'm sad or if I feel like, well, like, when I get like have a bad day or whatever and training doesn't go the way like I want it, like what it like, am I making a difference? And that one moment just makes me feel like so secure in myself that I'm doing something right. Yeah. Oh, well, that's cool. That, that, yeah, that's, um, that's, uh, it's funny. Cause even, even, um, shoot, I'm 34 years old. I've been doing what I've been doing for a while. And I, 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 I remember, um, or, and I still don't, I have to remind myself sometimes that people think that about me. Like they see me as like a motivation or inspiration or something like that. Cause I, I wake up and I'm like, okay, what do I have to do today to accomplish my goals? That's the only thing I give a fuck about, you know? And it's like, and, and like part of that is like, I, I just, I like helping people, but I, I, I feel weird often. Cause I'm like, who am I? Well, like, how am I, like, who am I to give somebody advice on or like, mm-hmm. how am I in? But I just, it just so happens to be I'm in this position, you know, and I remember yeah. it was, a, you know, I was like, what the, you know, I'm just um, a dude living his life, you know, and, and, um, but it was, uh, it was 2000, 2011, I did a, no, no, it was 2012, six months after I got my leg cut off, I did a Tough Mudder <laughs> in the mountains of Colorado and the newspaper was up there and stuff and I didn't have social media or anything back then. I didn't care about, I, w- I didn't even, I was still in school. I didn't know what I was going to do with my life and stuff, you know, and, um, the newspaper did a story about me and Tough Mudder was posting pictures on Facebook about me and stuff. And that's when it kind of, people were like, oh, this guy is an inspiration, such a motivation and things like that. And I didn't, and that's when I, that's when I learned, I was like, just because I don't believe it 
doesn't mean it's not true for that person. And so I have to take mm-hmm. their perspective into account and respect that. And it's even though it's like, I don't feel that I don't have to like myself as much as somebody else does, you know, but I like appreciate or like, but I treat that with care, like how they think of me. It's like, I respect that, you know, and I don't, so it's like, I don't have to believe that I'm an inspiration to be mm-hmm. an, an inspiration. inspiration, you know, it's like a weird, mm-hmm. it's a weird thing. And it's, it's, yeah, you know, I it's know what you mean. Yeah. Totally. What's funny is I was just thinking about that the other day. I was getting ready to do school with my tutor. So she's also my friend Eden and we went to Starbucks and, um, we, we, they like were closing <laughs> yeah. and we, I was like, thanks for taking us our order. And I gave them like a tip cause I felt bad <laughs> that they like were closing and we drove up there and they still took our order. Yeah. And he was like, thanks thanks for the tip queen busy. And we drove away and I was like, that's weird. It feels those, like those I'm, short interactions are yeah. funny. Huh? When people don't stop you and you're just like, yeah, I had, I was, I was just in target the other day and uh, and, uh, I was, I, I think I got away with one. I didn't, I didn't have my mask on all the way cause I was walking in the back, you know? So I was getting some fresh air, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like, so some guy in like a target shirt comes walking by and, and, um, I was like, oh shit. But he was like, he's like, um, he's like, Hey man, big fan, have a good day. And he just, we just like passed away. I was mm-hmm. like, that makes yeah. you feel, or it makes, it makes you feel, you know, I had, I had a, I've had a problem with like self-esteem and confidence my whole life. And that's something I've been working on so that my boys don't have that. Mm-hmm. It makes you feel good to be liked by other people. Like it makes you feel good to like other people. And it makes you feel good to be liked by other people. And maybe that's, that's kind of something you said a while ago, like after you got out of prison, changing your ways, like mm-hmm. being happy is cool. Being, you know, there's, there's this rhetoric is like, do it, you know, like people are like, do it for the haters. Like that's, that's such a bad mentality. It's like, why not do it for the people that like you, yeah. man? Yeah. Yeah, Actually yeah, yeah. I read, I got on the, uh, you know, I just opened up my homepage on the, on the, uh, uh, the the internet there and it's got the google and then it shows you like top articles and there's that guy like dj khaled or khalid dj khalid he, he, he had a, somebody wrote yeah yeah somebody <laughs> yeah it's like khaled or so yeah so yeah. somebody wrote an article about him um because one of his biggest things to say is like do it for the haters and they were like breaking down the psychology of of how it's a good thing to do it for the haters and i've never i've never bought into that i think it's such a negative mindset it was like they're going to hate anyways. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know, I was like, I do what I do for the people that love me yeah. and the people that I love, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm not doing it for the haters. I'm trying to make my wife proud of me. Stuff like that. You know, like it feels good. Yeah. And I, and I actually read, um, Jordan Peterson's book and it's in there and there's a lot of like parenting stuff in there and like, uh, watching you two and just, and just knowing it, like you, you do so many things well and right. It's like, oh, it's awesome. And you probably oh, didn't even God. read this. You probably didn't even read this book. You're just doing it. Like, that's legit. But, he, um, but it's like, it's so important for kids to try and be liked because it's good for their self-esteem and it's good for their confidence mm-hmm. and it shapes their worldview. Like, if you're, sh- if you're shitty to, pe- if, if you think people suck and you treat people as if they suck, then people are going to suck towards you mm-hmm. and that's going to be your worldview. But instead, if you're if you're going out of your way to you think people are good, you treat them like they're good. People are going to treat you good. And all Mm -hmm. of a sudden you have this positive worldview and like the world ain't all sunshine. We know that. But it's like you have such a good mentality and worldview. (laughs) We just just (laughs) thought the same thing. (laughs) I don't know. Did we? World ain't all sunshine and rainbow. (laughs) It's a very mean and nasty place. And I don't care how tough you are. It will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, and nobody is going to hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Rocky. Mindset. Five or six. Uh, Ro- yeah, Rocky Balboa. Yep. That's Rocky, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. I was just sending Rocky memes before. I, I <laughs> love Rocky. I love. Have you seen all the Rockies? I don't think I've seen them all. Yeah. That's okay. Um, yeah, no, that's, that's... I'm a big fan of Creed. <laughs> I haven't seen those ones. It's just, yeah. I like Rocky as a coach because it reminds me of my dad. Oh, like, but also yeah, with that, yeah. like... I've you ain't Hoyt. No, you ain't Hoyt. <laughs> you ain't Hoyt. <laughs> <laughs> with his little beanie on. Yeah. You ain't... You can't be Hoyt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's legit. Um, and two, I've always told her, like, you can... You can only control how you act to people yeah you can't
can't control their reaction. You want to tell them what you always tell me? What? I can't say it, so. Yeah, you can't say it. I know, because <laughs> I don't cuss. I've just always told her since, it, like, you just love everyone and be nice to everyone. It doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't matter. Even the people who are mean. That's even, what the, I, even the people who are nasty to I've you. I've told her since she, yeah. like, comprehend. Four or five years old. Mm-hmm. Like, this is the deal. Say hi to everyone. Mm-hmm. Guess what? It's easy for the people to say hi to the people to say hi to them first. Yeah. But you say hi to everyone, even if a person says fuck you. Mm-hmm. You say hi. It, it, Have a good day, so, sir. And, like, that's how I've always been to her. You know what I mean? Like, not like... Yeah. What'd you call a kid? <laughs> no. No kid gloves. Yeah. No, I, I, like, right. I, that's one of my rules of life. I make it a point to say hi to strangers because like otherwise you'll just walk past everybody. You have to make the first move in the world. And and does and it makes you feel so good. Just a just a tip of the hat to uh, somebody passing by. Makes it change your day. I will tell change you your day. I will tell you a crazy thing that she does on her own. I've never told her to do it. And it's still, every time she does it, it just amazes me. Cause what I do now, I've heard it so many times. I watch the reaction of the other people mm-hmm. and they're just like blown away. They're like, Oh, because it shows me that there's not enough of that in this world yeah, today no. because they're always like, if 99% of the people I say every, hi to, they wouldn't say exactly. Hi to every yeah. time we're in an elevator, the door opens, we go to get out and she goes, have a great day. Yep. And the yep. people in there are just like, yeah. 90% of the time they're like shell shocked. I know. Well, dude, they're like, oh, oh uh, yeah. You too. Thank you. So, like, and another first time I ever actually seen her do it. Crazy thing. Like, these are the things. I mean, I love her being an awesome athlete, but like, mm-hmm. like what I'm trying to, like, I've always told her to try and lead with love, like, right? You know what I mean? So, like, it makes me proud as a dad when I see her do stuff like the kid that I've never oh. told her to do. She just oh. is adapting. She's adopting those from what I'm trying to teach her. So like that yeah. we're in the hotel, right? I seen her do it like three times and she just picks up the phone, dials zero. Hello, this is Nikki at the front desk. She's like, I just want to tell you that you're doing an amazing job today. Shut <laughs> up. And you're, <laughs> and you're appreciated. And I'm like, when she hangs up, I'm like, what do those people say, B? <laughs> I'm like, what do those people Just, say, yeah. B? And she's like, oh my, say you know, some, yeah. like some, some of, of the reactions, some of them they're are like, like, oh my yeah. gosh, like, yeah. thank you so much. Cause you know that probably all they get told every day is, well, my room wasn't this and my room wasn't yeah, this. Yeah. Like yeah. people need to feel appreciated. Like you need to treat people. Like if I was working at the front desk, I would want a little girl to call me and be like, you're doing yeah. awesome. You know what I mean? But the impact, yes, where do you put the poopy sheets? Right. Yeah, like the impact <laughs> that has the impact that has on someone yeah. though is like yeah. no, 100%, like one one lady legit. was like, oh, well, thank you. Yeah, and just like hung up the phone. Mm-hmm. But you don't know yeah. what they're going through in life. Sure, mm-hmm. that yeah. might have s- saved their life. Yeah, you, know? you never know because they could think. At some point, it's the last. That's a, bo- that's a at, gangster. I've never even at, heard of that before. That's a gangster move. At some, and I'm gonna start doing that at hotels now. Every what, what, per stay, not every day, mm-hmm. per stay. Per stay. I'm gonna ring the desk and be like, "Hey, you appreciate job today." And I love. I'm I'm really enjoying my just stay. Just checked in and just, just like, wanted to say, I just appreciate you. Keep you know. That's legit. I've never heard of that. And that's she, such a that's a gangster. And movie. she le- <laughs> she writes a little. She no- writes notes to the maids when we check out. Mm-hmm. Thank you. You're awesome. Like, just know you're special. See, yeah, that's that. Legit. Stuff like, um, uh, and I, you know, that's the shit that'll impact the world though. Like, yeah, I, um, dude, I, 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 I was getting ready to go work out the other morning and I almost started fucking crying and I wasn't even, I was, I was like getting my stuff together. And, um, Stacy told me a story about what happened here is like, so we have a nanny and she was making them breakfast and she was making pancakes and Max walked over. And he grabbed two pancakes and they were like, oh, he must be hungry today or something like that. But he walked across the house and gave Jack a pancake. And I was like, fuck. I will not fucking cry. You know, it's like they, they almost make you cry. Sometimes they do make oh, you cry. No, when no, no, yeah. You know, and like, yeah. And, and, and like things like that happen where in like my boys are only 18 months. And, and there was a time where, where um, Max was crying on the floor. And, it, and, and Jack had a, a binky or a nook in, you know, and, and Max was crying because he didn't have a nook. And so I, it was out in the living room. So I got up, I started walking 
but Jack goes blowing by me and I was, and I stood against the Island and I was like, no way the, the kitchen Island. And I, and I, and I called over, I was like, Stacy watch. Cause I saw a, a binky on the floor across the room and Jack was headed that way. And I was like, no way. I was like, Stacy watch. And she started watching and we watched Jack. We didn't even know that binky was there. He did somehow. He grabs a binky. He walks over and he puts it in Max's <laughs> mouth. And I was like, shut the <laughs> fuck <laughs> up. <laughs> I know. Just that, you know, so I, you know, when you tell me so stories cool. like watching her do that, I bet you're over there like, <laughs> Stay strong, baby girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's legit. Um man, I think um I think that's gonna What's crazy about it is even thinking about it right now, like you just saying that's gangster, I'm gonna do that. Like I look at it like she's thirteen, like yeah. inspiring a grown mm-hmm. man to do something. Like, <laughs> totally. I knew that get, I knew that was gonna happen. I knew that you know was gonna what I mean? happen. Like that's you know? so like, crazy. Well I was, to, like, I was like, why would I have you know, like, cause our listeners are like military LEO type people and like old, you know, I was like, are they going to sit down? Like, yeah, they need to sit down and listen to what this 13 year old girl has to say. <laughs> cause she's fucking better. She's better than us already. She's like, she, oh, oh my like, goodness. You, just, you know, you know like, I, gotta, we gotta, I gotta go get to work. You know, I gotta, I gotta go make a phone call. Hello. You know, like I'm gonna call the front desk somewhere, just anywhere, you know, that's legit. That's, that's so cool. And, and actually, you know, like that's what, that's one of the things I love about CrossFit there's just, there's, there's a lot of good positive examples of people that kind of like inspire you. Cause like it's, it's such a positive, you know, like CrossFit's got pooped on like three, four weeks ago because of yeah. the things Greg Glassman said and stuff like that. But CrossFit overall and like 99.9% of the athletes, it's such a diverse community and it's just a positive, like sometimes for me, it's an annoyingly positive community. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, they're like they're f- happy people and i don't understand that you know <laughs> but um uh but it's it's it, it's like but these are your role, role models and i think like the tia claire's mm-hmm. and katrin's and i, I like sarah Sig- sigmund's daughter <gasps> she's, she's so legit, funny you know? yeah there's a <laughs> yeah oh yeah she's like a star wars yeah. uh star trek nerd kind of yeah. yeah no it's, it's cool that to to have those kind of role models and actually i was reading are you familiar with uh dan crenshaw the congressman from texas um, so he was a, he was a Navy SEAL. He fucking got blown up and he lost his eye. Um, but he's a congressman in Texas and he's got, um, he's got a book called Fortitude. Mm-hmm. It's legit. It's, it's really fucking good. And one of, one of his points in there, it was like, choose your heroes carefully. Like, you know, like pick the right mm-hmm. heroes. And, um, a mistake I've made in my life is not having heroes. I don't, I don't allow myself to have a role model or something like that. And that might be because I lacked a father figure and I just always kind of like dependent on myself, you know? So it's like, it's so cool for me to listen to this and you have these like good heroes available, but that also you choose them. Yeah. You could could choose other paths. I do always say those are my inspirations. I only have one hero in my life. Well, two, I should say the Lord and him are my heroes only because he's shown me so much and so much of what I can do. And like, if you ask me like, who's your hero? I only have one hero, my dad. Yeah. Like. Legit. Also because what have I always told you? I'm always, I've always told the, because mm-hmm. as far as mindset and stuff too, I, t- <laughs> t- I tell people like the problem, is, you know, like whether it's Katrin, whether it's Tia, whoever it is, like I've always told, it, like I never want them to be, sometimes people put them, so much right, on a yeah, They're like, sure, yeah. That mm-hmm. person's on that pedestal. I can I never, never be get that. There. Yeah, like what have I always told you? Yeah, he said, "I want you to have inspirations, but always remember, all those girls put their spanks on the same way you do." Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Like I don't ever want her to think that nothing's possible. Yeah. Like, like, oh my God, yeah. that's Catherine. I just could pay never attention get to there. what they do, refine right. it, and then go beat them. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's the point. That's mm-hmm. the that's that's the evolution of. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like it's the it's the evolution of all sports. Just, all all mm-hmm. athletes get better because we watch. Who, yeah, but you know. Well, yeah, that, exactly. Yeah, Haley Adams. Haley Adams is doing it right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she, she like she said a high bar. I'm gonna go jump over it, but that was a pretty good high bar. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I think that's gonna do it for today. I do. I had. I'm. Thank you for taking the time yeah. to come sit down with us on vacation. That was no awesome. problem. That was. It was cool to hear. Um, more of your background and I, I really did. appreciate you Corey sharing 
I still hate the beginning. <laughs> Legit, man. I fucking love hearing that kind I of shit. I do have one question for you. Yeah, what's up? Favorite movie of all time. Oh, this is going to blow you away. Because I bet it's a musical. Uh, I think if it, it, uh, my answer in the past is if I have to sit, if, if, so it's like desert Island and I can take one movie or if I'm about to die and they're like, what movie you want to watch? I'm, I'm going to say the count of Monte Cristo and you've probably never seen it. Nope. Yeah. The count of Monte Cristo. You got to watch it. You got to watch that movie. I'm just <laughs> like, yep. Mm hmm. And it's you, the best. yeah, that's the that's like the burning question you've been having. Or what? No, I, I have a random. lot of questions. I like, I just you can fire away if you just, if you got questions. Ask I'm me now. Curious. Favorite <laughs> sports movie? Okay, I'll be. I'm gonna take a P, and then we'll do questions. So this is a kids joke. It's a good one. What happens to a frog's car after it breaks down? I don't know. It gets towed away. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I love jokes like that, like dad jokes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Oh man, there was a. She's a joke fanatic. I yeah. love jokes. Keep going. Give me another one while I find one. Cause it's. Um. Let's see. I'm trying to think. She's trying to think of a clean one, brother. <laughs> I have a lot of inappropriate jokes. Mm-hmm. Mm. <laughs> see this one, this meme right here. Mm-hmm. It's um. It's so the the it's a girl and a guy. Mm-hmm. The girl sa- or the, um the girl says, "What are your plans for today?" And the guy says, me and a friend of mine are going to buy some glasses. And she says, and after that? And he said, and after that, we'll see. <laughs> That's funny. I love just like dumb dad jokes yeah. like that. Oh, you yeah. Know? How do you find Will Smith in a snowstorm? I don't know. You look for the fresh prints. Oh, boy. <laughs> 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 um, uh, so, did you have more questions? Yeah. I'm ready. It was favorite sports movie. Favorite sports movie. Um, you know, you know what? I think I do. I, there's, there's one that like gets me. It'll, it'll kind of make me cry every time. It Rudy. gets, it chokes me. No, mm-mm, I don't like Rudy. I don't even think I've ever seen it in, in its entirety. Mm-hmm. It's that movie. I think it's called Warrior with Tom Hardy. <gasps> dude, that movie. Oh my gosh, gets me, such dude. a good movie. That movie. I've been watching it on a plane. I can't watch it on airplanes anymore because I'm like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, such so, a good movie. Uh, yeah, yeah that, I would have to say that uh, is my favorite sports movie. Mm-hmm. What else you got? Favorite workout of all time. Hmm. I'll t- I had a I had a day of training that was that was gnarly, and I and I and I've had the same coach for the last six years, and I always bring up this day of training because it's funny. But look, like looking back, this is my my favorite day. And I did really well. Um, it started with, um, or my, my on paper, it was grace Mm -hmm. into a five rep max strict press into Fran. And I was like, Oh Lord. So grace is 30 clean and jerks at 135 pounds. So for me, that's difficult because like I don't clean and jerk. I muscle clean and strict press, Mm -hmm. you know? So that's 30, um, strict press at 135. And I, and I prison style. Yeah, and I finished that in like in in like two twenty six, which is really good for for that workout with my um, uh, disability. And then for this the five rep max strict press, I hit two oh five. So I was like, hey, I felt accomplished. I, I was like, I'm I'm good. I'm smoked. I feel accomplished. I text my coach. I was like, hey man, I did really good. Can I just like sit Fran out? Like, can I be done for today? And he texts me back. And his text, he said, let me know your Fran time. Yeah. Damn it, man. And so I had to hit Fran after that. And I did I did good in that. And like I don't do, you know, like a one thirty Fran or something like that. Cause like it's a but I I I, I did good there. It was like sub three, which is good for me. So like I had it was just like a tough I like for me it's like um um I like stacking workouts on top of each other. Or it's like the more things start to suck. I think the more I enjoy them mm-hmm. afterwards, I, I'm I'm mm-hmm. uh, I'm an engine guy, and it seems like when I'm fresh in a workout, I do poorly. The more tired I get, the better I get. That's kind of when I get dangerous, and I've always sort of been that That's way. I don't I am. know. So it, like it like motivates me when once I'm sweating and once I'm tired and once it's like you're you're in that mindset of like yeah. So like that's I like those kind of workouts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Least favorite workout that you've done glute bridges 
That's, glue that's bridges. That's accessory work. That's a stupid movement that I don't. I've. I my. The thing is, is like since quarantine, my coach makes me do them because the bro gym was closed, and so um, we were like. You had to come up with home accessory movements and stuff like that, and um, and I was kind of ch- this is this is so I'm in I'm in competition training right now. I'm like eight or nine weeks in, and I've never submitted to a coach a hundred percent. So like in the past, like he'll write my CrossFit programming, but he doesn't know what I do on top of that because I still do like classic training, and I think they go hand in hand. Um, um, but for this one, I just I submitted to him entirely, like with my feedback i'm his only client and he's my only coach um so it's like with my feedback and it's like here's what i like and stuff like that so he makes me do these weird things that i would never normally do and i'm doing them to see how or just to try to grow and like expand get out of my comfort zone and things like that but i just think glue bridges are stupid (laughs) my least favorite accessory (laughs) movement is bulgarian split squats yeah I can't do those anymore. <laughs> yeah, I, I've tried. I just lose my balance and stuff, you know. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. but those are those are those are um, that's a gnarly movement. Yeah, but I wanted to say thank you, anyways, too, though, for giving me uh, something to throw at her when she's like <laughs> feeling like a little <laughs> mm-hmm. victim. Here's your Bulgarian I split say, squats. No, yeah. not that. Well, when she's feeling like a little pussy. Yeah. She always says, little kitty, yeah. don't be a yeah. little kitty. Don't be a little kitty. That's his yeah. favorite saying. So, yeah. Like, right. we'll be getting ready to start. He'll be like, don't be a little kitty. Yeah. No, what you said to her on the row. She's already told her grandma and everything. I was like, she's I got like, called out. She was like, uh, I was feeling oh, kind of, yeah. I was feeling kind of like, what, how'd you say it? You tell the story better than me. Go ahead. Wait. When it you- happened to you. <laughs> when you tried to scale the calories. Yeah, I uh, pulled a Derek. Did you? Yeah, but then wow. she crushed it. Sue, she crushed it. Can I, <laughs> can I tell the story? It's yep. funny. Yeah, it's, it's tell it. yeah. <laughs> it's funny, man. And I was like, uh, so we were, we were working. So like, they came to town. I didn't know they were coming to town. And I said, hey, tomorrow here's my workout. You guys want to hop in? They're like, yeah. I was like, cool. So we we did my workout that day, and um and the workout was it was a 17 minute AMRAP, 30 cal. It's just written for me. Right. So 17 minute AMRAP, 30 calorie row, 30 shoulder to overhead. 30 deadlifts and then a 30 foot handstand walk. And, um, we had already done a workout before that. Um, and, and we're getting set up and stuff like that. And she asked how she should scale the row. And I, and I, and I told her what I told my sister. I was like, I was like, it's always interesting for me <laughs> to, when people with two legs ask me how they should scale the row. I was like, are you asking the guy with one leg how you should do less because you're a female with he two legs? He was like, you yeah. want to do less calories with your two legs? I got one leg and mm-hmm. I do more calories. Mm-hmm. And I was like. So she, and, then, and I was like, I was kind of joking, right. but she did it. She did 30, 30, 30. And she didn't, I didn't, I, 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 I beat her, but not by a comfortable amount. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She was right there. And, and I was it, like, that, it was legit. I'll do 30 calories, which is, which is like, yeah, that's, well, she didn't actually tell us she was doing it. She just got just stubborn and it. just yeah. did it. But that's legit. That's a cool mindset, you know? Yeah. Um, but, and then, uh, what was, I was, so I was on my second round. So I was back there rowing. So we had a, a setup. It was like, you row and then you walk down to your barbell and then you handstand walk back. And for me, I always like take a few seconds to shake off before I go into handstand walks because I want to like those. This is a, it's not a tough move. It's just weird being upside down, yeah. you know? And so I always take a few seconds and maybe sometimes I take too many seconds. Cause I'm like, oh, I don't want to go upside down. I don't want to go upside. Here we go. That's you know? Right. And she, she finished her deadlifts and I was, and I was watching her. I was rowing. She like puts the barbell down. And before that's even done bouncing, she's on her hands walking all the way back. I'm like, Oh, <laughs> good for you. Good for you. He's like, it yeah. takes at least 27 <laughs> seconds yeah. to mentally prepare for hands down walks. <laughs> Mm-hmm. He was like, I guess not for you. Yeah. <laughs> yep. She just like Rowing. dropped the barbell and went right to it. A lot of people sit there and dilly dally uh, in between handstand walks and before handstand walks. I was walks just trying to just... get to the handstand walks. Because mm-hmm. that was her favorite It was my favorite part. part. Mm-hmm. Of that part. Or he, that I remember saying, I was like, that's a bold move, Brooklyn, in my head before I said it. Because Derek was like, 90 seconds left or something. And I was like, I oh, only yeah. need 30. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you finished two full rounds of that. You finished on the mm-hmm. rower. Yeah. And yep. I, I finished two rounds plus a couple here and there. So she, yeah, she went, she went full. <laughs> men, oh, men, mm-hmm. men's, men's well, cripple. She was still, yeah, yeah. She, was, 
<laughs> she, was, <laughs> she was still on the deadlift, and he said 90 seconds. Mm-hmm. So she was talking about to finish the round. She's mm-hmm. like, I only need 30. Yep. I was so. like, you better but, back it up. Yeah. I tell people I want that, too. You got to fucking believe in what you're doing. You got to be yeah. confident. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. And it's not like in a... You know, no, people, con- confidence yeah, is a good word, people but people are always like, that people with are like yeah. cocky. Right. Yeah. Like, no, my dude, I'm I like, didn't, that's I, because you don't do this shit. Yeah. Like you got to believe in what you can do. Like I always say the difference, like arrogant people, like you were just saying, you're doing glute bridges to see if you can grow. Mm-hmm. That means you're not fucking arrogant. Mm-hmm. Arrogant people think they know it all and don't, aren't going to listen and aren't going to grow. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. But you have to be confident in what you do. Do yep. believe in yourself? I've I've never I um in the army I think we had like a borderline arrogance, but I think it's necessary <laughs> there. And then and then as you grow as a soldier, you you tone that down a little bit. But as an eighteen year old private, they 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 condition you to be arrogant and feel like you're indestructible because mm-hmm. you're the one kicking indoors. And if it comes to it like trench warfare, you're running into the machine gun fire. You know, so as you grow as a soldier, you, 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 um, dial that back down a little bit, but in my civilian life, I've never had, I didn't, I didn't have self-esteem growing up and that's, it kind of like carried on with me and I had issues with, you know, um, depression and suicide and things like that. And, but when the boys were born last year, they, then I started having these feelings where it's, and I, and I learned this lesson and it, and it just happened naturally. I was like, my whole life I've been afraid of losing but I've never wanted to win. Like there's a difference between being afraid of losing and wanting to win and wanting to win is that confidence, you know, and it's the boys that taught me how to be confident. Cause all of a sudden I'm this father figure now. And it's like, Hey, I want my boys to be confident. I want them to like themselves. I want them to be liked by other people. So what if, if I want them to be that, what happened, what has to happen first? I have to be that. Yeah. And it, they, they just like, they really changed me. They made me a more positive person. And it's like. Your thought process went from defensive to offensive. Mm-hmm. Instead of defending from the loss. Yeah. You're, you're so I was like, and mm-hmm. I, and I still did well through my twenties and stuff like that, but it was a lot of like. It was like I was I was fueled by like insecurity and sadness and fear, but now I'm fueled by these positive things, and I have yep. confidence. And if somebody wants to mistake that with arrogance, I'm just like you're an idiot. Yeah, you're because I still don't. I still get sad and don't like myself, but now I have like a, I have a really cool reason to do well. And it's like so for the first time in my life, and now moving forward as a competitor, it's like I believe in myself. And that's legit. It's such yeah. a cool feeling. And when things get hard, mm-hmm. you're like, no, I'm tough. It's, I'm, I can do this. It's and, so cool. Like walking into any situation thinking no matter what, you're going to get through it or you're going to be able to do it. Mm-hmm. And it's a thing that not a lot of people have, which is really sad because I just, I really would love for everybody in the world to know what that feels like. Yeah. Because it can change your life. Yeah. And that's, you know, I say fitness is a selfish endeavor and, 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 but in a good way. And it's like, if maybe some more people put more time and effort into themselves and their problems and their growth and stopped worrying about other people's problems, thousands of Mm -hmm. miles away and things like that. Yeah. No, you just got to keep your head down sometimes, but that's, Mm -hmm. that's cool. I, I, yeah, the, 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 the misconceptions between confidence and arrogance and, and years ago when I, when I said, might be difficult for you to keep her humble. It was just my thought of, because I was like, man, this girl is really good. Like but she knows it. And I wasn't used to that yet. I wasn't, I wasn't, cause I've never been used to knowing I'm good, you know, but now it's, now I can say, and it was like, oh yeah, I'm good. I'm dangerous. And that, yeah. That's going to make me a, 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 a lethal athlete mm-hmm. and, and tough to beat because I did very well my whole life without that. And now, uh, my boys made me learn that. And I was like, whoa, no, I'm confident. Look out. And I can sit and I, and I have no problem with like saying like, Oh yeah, I want to win. I live to win. I train to win. I want to win. And if I don't win, it's like, wow, that dude is good. Mm-hmm. And he put yeah. in a lot of hard work and that's awesome. Congratulations. Yeah. You know, and like feeling good for other people. And when mm-hmm. I see other people win, it's like, man, they worked hard for that. That's awesome. Good job. You know, but I want that for me too. You know, and I, and mm-hmm. I can say that and not, I always, you always feel like you have to defend yourself when you're talking about 
your own life. You're like, oh, I'm sorry that I want to do well and be happy. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, like, I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> but right. it's a weird thing. We feel that pressure to defend ourselves and tiptoe around our words and stuff like mm-hmm. that. But yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, um, I enjoyed the conversation. I appreciate, appreciate you guys taking time out of your vacation to come here and, and hang out with us and, and talk a little bit. I think um, your story, both of you, is great. And your relationship is... I mean, I I respect the shit out of you two, and 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 I take notes because <laughs> I'm trying to raise some champions down the road that. too. Like, no, I'm this, taking notes, man. It's it's very cool. Yeah, this is like the crazy stuff I was talking about. Like he's thanking us for coming, but like in my head, I'm like, oh my gosh, like I'm on a podcast with Derek. Here we like, are. What's going on? Here we are. Everybody's happy. For real. Everybody's I doing gotta, good things, living crazy. a good life, and that's because hard work pays off. Hard work does yep. pay off. Yeah. Where uh, where can people find you? Yeah. Let's plug. Let's plug your stuff. All your right, uh, you go first. social media. Me? Yeah, you. Yeah, you're raising a champion, yeah. just like Derek said. <laughs> <laughs> I'll gladly be the raising. Yeah. Smash Daddy sit. Smash Daddy sit. It's C Y T, right? Yeah. Or what? So your Instagram C- is Smash Daddy S I T. S I T. Yep. Smash, smash Daddy, Daddy S I T. Yep. Because well, Smash then, Daddy was my fight name when I was MMA. Oh really? So my shirt yeah. said Smash Daddy's Princess. Okay, perfect. Yes. Yep. And you are Queen underscore B Z thirteen. And that's B E E Z Y. Yep. Queen underscore B Z thirteen. Follow her now, because I mean, if you <laughs> don't, if you don't now, you're gonna, you're gonna know, <laughs> you're gonna know who Queen B Z on. So now you could, you know, if you start following her today, yeah, five years down the road, you'd be like, I've been following her since she was thirteen. You know, yep. like, it's it, gonna happen someday. It is so crazy though to see <laughs> people already are like, oh my, you know, because obviously she's changed since she's been seven, like right. she's mm-hmm. getting older and stuff. And people are always like. You know, like, oh my God, you're growing up. And yeah. Or I've been following get you on for the like three, four, four years crazy, now. Yeah. And I'm like, the wait. People are like that invested in like what we're doing. And yeah, like, like so. when people come up to me, they're like, I've been following you for like three years now or four years. I'm like, wait, has it, it's been that long yeah. already? Right, yeah. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. it's crazy. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, and I, and I, and I, I don't say that jokingly. I truly believe that. It's like, follow you now, get on the ground floor. Cause we're all going to know. Or everybody else mm-hmm. is going to know who you are, just like we know <laughs> the Matt Frasers and Tia Claires. I, I 100% believe that. Like, and I know you got a lot of competition. There's, I didn't know there's a lot of good teenagers yeah, out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, just mm-hmm. crushing. And what I tell but, her, what's crazy about it is, I'm like, you got to work hard mm-hmm. because somebody's doing everything right, and if you're only doing nine out of ten things right, you're going to lose. But I also you tell know? her, like, you know how to like with social media, it puts her in the spotlight, right? So because she has a big social media following so like these other girls some of them are looking up to you like you look up to catching or whatever so it's gonna make them be like well if brooke if bz if queen bz can do it i can do it yeah so like you're yeah. gonna have to work harder because you're inspiring your competition yeah. no, and like a, you have to keep yeah. right yeah, a, that's it, what derek was a, saying it's the it's other day interesting leadership position like, and then Exactly. And That's then, how I feel. And then that, that the motivation goes both ways sometimes. Like sometimes if I get caught in a moment of weakness, it's like, nah, <laughs> like, is that the message you want to put out in the world? Mm-mm. Like step it up. You always have to. So like, yeah, if you want to be a leader, Ooh, you have to yeah. let's go. <laughs> yeah, leaders lead. You got to be better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Cause you, you're setting the example and, and, um, it's cool. It's fun to watch. Um, yeah. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, man. We appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. All right. And Owen, we will catch up with you next week. We'll talk about our three-week hiatus, what we did. Lots of of changes coming, too. Yeah. So um, that'll do it for this week's episode of Savage Saturdays here on the Drinking Bros Podcast. As always, we love you. Cheers.